Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. We bless God for what he's doing in this place. I welcome everyone. May God bless and honor you in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Matthew 13. We're supposed to start a new series. Um, I don't know how far we can go in it. But if we're unable to take it tonight, no problem. We're taking a series on the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew 13 from verse 10. Matthew 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest unto them in parables? Verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, say it is given unto me, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. He said, but unto them it is not given. Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he says, because you have chosen to walk with me, it is given unto you. In other words, access has been granted unto you. Not just to know. The word know there is the same word that is used when it refers to a man knowing a woman. It's not just talking of head knowledge. Are you following me now? And Abraham knew his wife. So it is given unto you to come into this realm where you can know, comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I began to share with us, I think over the last two weeks, how that the concept of dominion, please follow me. Dominion is not just a word that refers to authority by claiming. Uh -uh. There are certain revelations and keys that bring a man by default into this realm, dominion. So, dominion is the resultant effect of certain things at work, certain keys. Hallelujah. So, a lot of people talk about dominion and then we talk about dominion in terms of authority, delegated power. And we just believe you claim it and you say, I'm walking in dominion. No, it doesn't happen that way. There is an understanding of the structure of the kingdom. Please follow me. When you come into the comprehension of that structure of the kingdom and the keys that release the laws of the spirit to walk then you will walk in dominion. Say amen. Hallelujah. And in the last two weeks, we've been examining a number of things. We 
touched a bit last week on transformation. I shared last week on the laws of dominion. We talked about the laws of territory. How that dominion is territorial. Dominion is not just a vague terminali terminology that means just go anywhere and rule and reign. Uh -uh. Dominion is territorial. Hallelujah. How many of you remember? And then we spoke about the law of exchange. It's a powerful spiritual law. You neglect that law at your own detriment. So a rich man can exchange his fertility for money. Hallelujah. Someone else can exchange his, um, the, the peace of a land like Bishop was sharing for their personal gain. It's the law of exchange. A very, very powerful law. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we'll look a bit um, into the concept of mysteries. What is a mystery? Let's just get that background. If we cannot talk about, let me just give us the background and then, because my, my central teaching tonight really is, is on the ecclesia, the church. I'm going to be teaching on the church, but I just want to, by way of introduction, just touch a bit on the mystery. Number one, a mystery is anything that is kept secret or remains unexplained or unknown. That's the first definition. A mystery is anything that is kept secret. Anything that is kept secret. Please follow me tonight. Over the next few weeks, many of you are going to be walking in mantles of dominion. You, this is not about receive it, take it. No. It's about a revelation bringing you into an experience. You will not even know that it has started working. Hallelujah. It's a byproduct of understanding. The Bible says, and Jesus opened up their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said, ye err not knowing the scriptures. May God grant us grace. There is what you can know that will make you a wonder. There is what you can know. Listen, all men are equal in Christ, but understanding has separated men into cadres, such that what is possible for one may not be possible for the other. This is the distinguishing feature. This is the mark of this ecclesia of God, the church. I'm going to come there, but I want us to understand that a mystery is anything that is kept secret or remains unexplained or unknown. Number two, a mystery is any truth that is unknowable except by divine revelation. A mystery is any truth that is unknown. That means it cannot be known with intellectualism. It cannot be found with just philosophies and people's ideologies. A mystery is a truth that is unknowable except by divine revelation. Elihu began to speak in Job 32 and verse 8. He said, but there is a spirit in man. When all the elders came and began to, to debate among themselves in an attempt to explain the reason for the predicament of Job. I hope you understand that the meeting between the sons of God and Lucifer coming in the midst of them was a privileged information that was given by the writer to the readers. Those who were existing in that day did not know that such a meeting had happened. So they were judging on the strength of their knowledge. The Bible says at the predicament of Job, all of the great men that represented different spheres of influence, they came together and they were so shocked at the predicament of Job. The Bible says they were silent for seven days. Reasoning among themselves, stretching their intellectualism from end to end in an attempt to find what cause. Out of the archives of the knowledge they had known that was responsible for wealth and poverty, they kept stretching their minds to see and understand what would have been responsible for this man's predicament. And then Elihu, the youngest of them, kept quiet and allowed them to keep articulating themselves. And Eli who said, I wanted to speak, but I was afraid because I was young. And I thought that you people are old and so you will speak. 
There are certain things that wisdom and age cannot teach. He said, but there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration, the breathing of that spirit upon men can grant unto them understanding. Hallelujah. So there are certain things you can know without experience. It's the illumination of the spirit. And we call that mysteries. This is my definition of a mystery. Number three. This is what I call a mystery. A mystery is a mystery is or mysteries are spiritual codes. C-O-D-E-S. Mysteries are spiritual codes that activate the operation of the laws and systems of God. This is my definition of a mystery. That a mystery is a spiritual code that activates the operation and the systems of God and by extension activates the operations in the spirit realm. Mysteries are spiritual codes. Every king in ancient time, every kingdom, follow me please, in ancient time became great on the strength of the mysteries that the kings had. Are you following me now? So mysteries are spiritual codes. When understood, they grant access to operating and activating certain laws in the spirit. When I started studying on this series, I was shocked to find out how many mysteries there are in the kingdom. Say after me, this kingdom is a kingdom of mysteries. Hallelujah. A kingdom of mysteries. The realm of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, the satanic kingdom thrives and prevails on the strength of mysteries. Are you following me now? That's why when we find somebody, there's a terminology we use. We call them secret societies, not public societies. Is that true? Secret societies because you just see the manifestation of what they do. The, the dynamics of their operation is a mystery that is revealed only to a, 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 a what do I call it now? A brotherhood, a sect of certain people who have pledged their fraternity with that group. Or that cult. And so you come and pledge your fraternity. And to the extent to which the leaders are satisfied with your allegiance. They open you up to certain mysteries. And the mysteries determine your ranking. Are you getting my point now? So that if you saw a man who was maybe a herbalist and all of that. He's only a herbalist at that level on the strength of the mysteries that were revealed to him. Is that true? When matters go bad, he will go to, in quote, what he will call another higher person. And the difference between two of them is the mystery that has been conceived. In the Nigerian army, the ranking of the military is according to the secrets of the, the mysteries, the code of operation. Are you getting me? That governs war. And, and, and the art of military intelligence and all of that. So when they are about to promote another person, there is a special place where they train only people who attain certain ranks. And secrets are committed unto them. Are you getting me now? It is on the strength of this secret that they are given certain ranks. So that the limitation of the lower soldier does not affect the intelligence of the higher one. Everybody say mysteries. Your dominion in this kingdom lies on the strength of your understanding. Listen, I love Daniel. The Bible says in Babylon, they were selected. Is that true? A number of people were selected and Daniel was selected. They were selected to be taught mysteries. Mysteries as regards the Babylonian worship. Hallelujah. Daniel, Shadrach, Abednego, all of these boys... They were selected and they took them to a special school 
where they taught them the science of the Babylonians, where they taught them the oracles and the ordinances, the covenants that made Babylon strong. And the Bible says when they were tested, Daniel was found ten times better. But that's not the point. Daniel had an extra advantage they did not know. So there was a time they saw a mystery. Look, Daniel bombarded Babylon with all kinds of mysteries. Hidden truths. The secret that can make animals not to touch a man. It was not known to anybody. Daniel entered the lion's den and reproduced Eden in that lion's den. Hallelujah. When Belshazzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, they went and they brought all of, they made a feast to the God of gold and of silver and all of that. It was the custom of kings that when they spoiled any nation, they would hold a feast to display their royalty and their strength. And in doing that, they will bring all of the spoils that they had gotten and celebrate and thank the God that kept his covenant with them. Hallelujah. And while they were taking of the cups that were made for the temple of the Lord, a handwriting, everybody say a mystery. A mystery was written. It was a language that did not belong to the earth realm. And all the sorcerers and the necromancers and the people who taught Daniel, they came with their advanced knowledge and they cracked all the codes and they could not find out. And they said, there is a man. Hmm. There is a man. To this man has been given the understanding. And Daniel looked and they wanted to bless Daniel with rewards. Daniel said, keep your reward. Let me unlock this thing to you. Mene, mene tekel ufesen, O king. You have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. This day, your kingdom will be taken from you. Everybody say mysteries. Dominion on the strength of mysteries. There is something you will know that will open your eyes to the patterns that are happening in your family. And it no longer becomes a surprise. When men are running, you are the champion that will step in and say, Satan, you can deceive others. I know you. You know I know you. Hallelujah. Mysteries. Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, verse 14. Are you getting blessed tonight? Psalm 25, verse 14. Please open your heart, not just to listen, but to receive. I told you last week, if you are not changed, then we are wasting our time. Psalm 45, verse 14. The secret of the Lord, you can, you can just read it, it's projected. The secret of the Lord. Everybody, the secret of who? So the Lord has secrets. Is that true? The secrets of the Lord. Listen. Do you know? Let me give you a little background to shock you. I want to digress a bit. I will still talk about it. Do you know the name Satan and the name devil is not Lucifer's name? Are you aware that devil is a generic name? Satan means the accuser. Is that true? That's what it means. The Bible tells us in Revelation, that old serpent, even Satan, the devil, the accuser. That's why the Bible said, they shall cast out devils. Yes. In my name, they shall cast out devils. The one we call Satan, his original name as given by God is Lucifer. And you know the meaning of Lucifer, the light bearer, son of the morning. Are you seeing what made Satan very intelligent? Satan was the light bearer. He was the custodian of the revelations of the kingdom. The light bearer. So the one third of the angels that were given to him. I hope you know the first person to be in Eden was Satan. Not Adam. Satan had known Eden. Oh yes. Together with the angels. The ones we call. Ah. Can we continue? Do you realize that angels. Let me shock you. Angels do not have wings. I hope you know. See. Angels are like humans. They do not have wings. 
it is the cherubims and the seraphs that have wings. Is it not in your Bible? Did you ever, in fact, the Bible puts it this way, that when angels come, be careful, you can even confuse angels and people. It said, be good to others, for in this, some of you have entertained angels unaware. Are you getting my point now? Angels can eat human food. Abraham and his wife, when the angels came, did they not cook for them? Did they eat it? The Bible says that they ate the angels' food, manna from heaven. Is that true? I'm not teaching you heresy. All of this is in your Bible. Praise the Lord. In fact, let me show you something. The Bible says when the angel appeared to Mary, Mary was not shocked at the angel. It was the salutation, the message that surprised her. Not the angel. She looked at him and said, oh God, what kind of salutation is this? In other words, when the angel appeared to Zechariah, Zechariah, listen, Zechariah was not afraid in terms of the, no. When he doubted him, he said, I am Gabriel. Let me tell you something that will interest you. I hope you know, I spoke a bit two weeks ago on forbidden knowledge. Remember our teaching of, of forbidden knowledge? There are certain knowledge that God did not want this, his ecclesia to know. That was the knowledge Adam did not know. I hope you know Lucifer was created. Is that true? Lucifer was created. When Lucifer was created, his place of habitation was Eden. Follow me. Let me just clear this once and for all. The way some of you are looking at me, guy, I don't agree. Ezekiel 28. This is Bible studies. Ezekiel 28. Uh-uh. It was a prophetic word about the king of Tyre. That was Satan. As the earthly ruler. Satan was the earthly ruler before Adam. It was the judgment of Satan that led to the fall of Genesis 1 verse 2. And the earth was dark and void and formless. And the waters. You know why? Because I will show you that the earth was designed to be suspended on waters. The pillars of the earth passed down through the waters. God was speaking to Job. When Job summoned God, the Bible tells us, in Job 38, they began a conversation. And God said, hold on, Job. Where were you? Ah, Okay, let's just finish this one. What was, I, what was I going to check? See, we are talking about something. I, I want to conserve time. You are the ones who are pushing me into this thing now. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 11, Son of man, take up a lamentation about the king of Tyre. Satan was the real king of Tyre. And say unto him, thou, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, Verse 13, if you are a Christian, read. One, two, read. Thou hast been where? Whose garden? Thou hast been there. Thou hast been there. He said, every precious stone, business people, precious stone, Satan knows where gold is. He knows where silver is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh yes, he knows. That's why he can enrich any man that fraternizes. Let me tell you something. Satan and demons have the advantage of experience. They have been here for a long time. Revelation calls him that old serpent. Thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, and so on and so forth, and gold. He said the workmanship, all right? of thy tablets and of thy paths were, was prepared in thee in the day that you were there was a day he was created he was not created as satan he was created as <laughs> that means there was a story before genesis chapter one it was that story that was enshrined in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I told you in Eden, 
You don't eat to feel hunger. You eat to get understanding and impartation. Are you getting me now? The judgment of Lucifer after his rebellion was what led to Genesis 1 verse 2. And then what you see as Genesis 1 verse 3 was the recreation. And Elohim said, light, return as you were. And there was light. And then there was a creation again. Listen, I will show you that the creation in Genesis 1, there was another creation before then. Do you want me to show you? Follow me, Job 38. You will see that there was another, that was the, cre in fact, it was more detailed than Genesis 1. It was that creation that describes how the earth was made. And you will see how flawed science is. Follow me. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, Jehovah. We have touched the end of our Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of our Are you there? Let's hurry up. We really have to save time. Job 38. The Lord is speaking to Job now in the height of his predicament. Are you there? Then the Lord answered Job, I'm going to be very fast, out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Guard up your loins. He was challenging Job. Please help me with a handkerchief. Guard up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and thou answer me. Where was thou? Listen, this is God challenging Job. Question one. Where was thou? Ah, if we are not following, let's hurry up. We have to save time. Verse 4. Where was thou when I laid what? So the earth that science tells us is revolving in the air. God says, far, far, far. The earth has foundations. There was a time when I designed the foundations of the earth. And before that, I'm going to show you that the concept of the Son of God is not a New Testament concept. That's it. Are you there? Verse 5. Or declare, if thou hast understanding. Verse 5. Who had laid the measures of it? This was specific architecture happening when the earth was being designed. Are you getting me now? Before the earth, I hope you know the earth was designed before man as we know, Adam was there. And before Adam was there, there were already other people. You will see them now. Are you ready? Verse 6. Whereupon are his foundations fastened? Or who had laid his cornerstones? Seven, please, if you are a Christian. One, two, go. When the morning star sang, thanksgiving, that the, when you lay foundation, don't you do thanksgiving? That was what the, the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. It's in your Bible that there was a time when the foundations of the earth were laid. No man was there. No devil of darkness. All the men, the kings of the earth. Are you now seeing the arrogance of Psalm 24? Many kings were standing to say, we know so much about the earth. And God said, come on now. Job, tell me, where were you? This is God challenging the man he created. There are some revelations that when you have, you will worship God in spirit and in truth. You see how much is an insult to now believe that the opposite of God is Lucifer. God was God. One day he thought of creating a light bearer called Lucifer. See, these are the secrets that when you know to cast out devils become easy. Because you know that you are not confronting an enemy of God like, like another strength. Uh -uh. When you see spirits manifesting, you tell them, forget this. I have knowledge already. I have eaten of the tree of life. There is something that has given me knowledge. Listen. Some of this knowledge were part of the forbidden knowledge that the fallen angels began to tell the daughters of men and it tripped them and they started following the angels and they had intercourse and gave birth to giants. 
You think the daughters would just... If the angels were strange, wouldn't the daughters of men run away? Look, if there is an angel with one eye here and two wings, and he says, sweetheart, I just decided for me. Will you come to him? Don't you know that angels are more handsome than men? There are no ugly angels. See, angels were not... They were not born... They were created a symbol of God's own artistry. Are you getting me? Listen, if you see Adam in heaven today, you will know the difference between Adam and every man who was born. Adam was not born. God molded him. No woman's womb caused imperfection in him. I have come to the end. Take over. Now look up. This is another where I'm showing you the creation that happened before Genesis 1. Or who shut up the sea with doors. So God is saying the sea that we are seeing, there are doors in the spirit that shut it and create a boundary. That means every time you see flooding is an anomaly. A beast from hell is unlocking a door by operating certain principles. And in the days to come, the sons of light will have spiritual intelligence enough to challenge spirits across territories. It was on the strength of this kind of knowledge that Joshua looked at the sun. He said, I know your geography. Stand still. And the sun said, yes, sir. I see your intelligence. Listen, except you don't believe the prophecy that our generation is going to be great. If you think it is a joke that the Bible says it shall come to pass on that day that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted, they will do certain things that will scare men and all nations will run to it. We may not look like it, but we are coming. There is something God is doing in our lives. This is why it is important to subscribe to the dealings of the Spirit. Are you seeing why some people can become untouchable? It's not that, see, there is the knowledge that you have, there will no longer be fear. What will make you afraid? You have an ancient knowledge that, that predates Genesis 1. And on the strength of that, before that time, the Holy Ghost was still operating. We're talking about mysteries. Let's just read to verse 14. When I made the cloud its garment, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and broke up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, Look at the command God gave the seas, verse 11, and said, Thus far shall thou come, but no further, and here shall thou proud waves be stayed. Are you getting me now? The psalmist, the man you call David, these were some of the secrets that David had, and David was a warrior. He was, see, these people that were called sons of God, were sons of God on the strength of the mysteries that they knew. I told you the concept of son of God did not start in the New Testament. Sons of God. Men who had power and authority as if they were not human beings. They walked among us they were absolutely unlimited. Abraham, David, when, when Jezebel was threatening people, one man just showed up called Elijah the Tishbite. No other information. Said, who is this woman giving people headache? Elijah the Tishbite. Taking fresh air on a mountain with proper understanding of spiritual laws. And a band comes with all their ammunition. Elijah says, look at these helpless people. You, let me tell you, the knowledge of the mysteries of God can make you a wonder. It was on the strength of this 
Elijah taught Elisha these things. So Elisha was sitting down. And, the, and remember, was it the Assyrians now, the Philistines, one of all those people? They came and the servant was just, he said, come, keep quiet. You are only afraid. Oh Lord, I know that this man may not have that knowledge, but can you open his eyes? When he opened his eyes, that man saw. See, see what Elisha did for them. He made them blind and they gave them food to eat. They led them somewhere. Men who bastardized physical laws on the strength of what they knew. Samson was a man who had that strange understanding and showed us that a man can tap might from a realm beyond his normal body. And he used the jawbone of an ass and destroyed people with it. Couldn't ten people rush him and then another person quack him. Then somebody put a spear quickly. How did he kill them? It was the same formula that David knew and he taught the mighty men in the cave of Adullam. And they came up with that formula. One man killed 800 people that a sword, that means he was not holding that sword physically. No matter how you fight, a sword cannot cleave to your hand. What spiritual law did he use to hold the sword? You have taken all the glory you have taken all the praise you have taken all dominion you have taken all the praise you have made them yours See, this is what eating of the tree of life does for you it reveals more of god are you seeing why the bible says the testimony of jesus is the true spirit the character, the operation of prophecy. Right now, if we start worshiping on the strength of this knowledge, many of you have seen the might of God and you see how much he can change your situation and you will laugh at certain things without being motivated. You know that your God is able. Then some songs begin to make meaning. This is what Jesus taught the disciples. And after a while, they didn't even know whether they had faith or not. He said, you guys have been with me. You go and try what I've taught you. And this guy stepped into town and did mighty things. No cathedral, no ushers, no publicity. They saw devils crying up and down. They said, this is what Jesus told us. While they were discussing, another devil was shouting. And the Bible says they returned rejoicing. They said, ah, even the demons were subject to us. They were not born again, as we know, because Jesus had not died. But a revelation empowered them. It is that revelation that can make a handkerchief. A man can hold a handkerchief and fall. Does a handkerchief have faith? Can a handkerchief speak? Can he prophesy? Can he talk it? The apostolic work that God is doing in the church universal is going to scare the kingdom of darkness. Are you seeing why they are scared about your life? Because they do not yet know what you will become. But on the strength of the training you are going through, the devil is getting scared. That's why you will get persecution left, right, and center. The devil will say, stop him. Stop him! In the days that come, the least among us will be as great as David. It's not an issue of emoji and one special man of God carrying an anointing and then a bunch of helpless people. Let me tell you, as we explore the things in the kingdom, you will find out the laws that can activate the gifts of, of the spirit in a man. Are you getting me? If a herbalist can bend somebody down and wash his eyes and he will suddenly start seeing, what revelation did Elisha know that he told Naaman, go to a river, bath there and be clean. There was a time that a man was sick, very sick, and Elisha just took some leaves and dropped it on his leg. Hiya. What did these people know? Are you seeing why the Bible says the earth was not worthy of them? He said, this earth, no, this earth was not worthy of them. Philip was walking and suddenly this man left. 
I pray that God will grant us grace so that I will have the opportunity to teach on prophecy or the prophetic. And then I will show you certain things by the grace of God according to the limit of grace that has been given to me on how the prophetic works. Do you know why it's possible to see a thing before it starts? An adumbration of the prophetic is what is shown in our geography. We call it time zones. Everybody say time zone. How many of you know that some people have already seen tomorrow? Is that true? Now that is the, the spirit and the ability of prophecy. There are some people now that are already in tomorrow. Are you following me now? They can tell you how tomorrow looks like, but you are catching up. Are you getting me? What technology did scientists use to rewind and fast forward? Who gave them that concept? That you can rewind a video huh? to go back so that you watch something you like and you can fast forward it to jump something you don't like. Who taught them that principle? Look, let me tell you, don't fool yourself. Science does not rule the world. The realm of the spirit rules the world. Many scientists explored science with a level of passion that broke the boundaries of science and they entered into some realms. Please, let's go back to what we are talking about for heaven's sake. Mysteries. Spiritual codes. Dominion in the kingdom only becomes a reality in a man's life. To a degree that he understands and applies the mysteries of the kingdom. Please, I want to teach you something. Listen. By the way, let me take a minute and talk about the miracle service. Look up. The sincere truth is that there are many of you right here. You are not, you are not necessarily sick. You are not necessarily oppressed. The reason why you are coming here for many of you is to grow right now. Some keys have been given to you. Are you getting my point? Miracle service is like, it's, it's an evangelistic, if it's the same you that comes next week alone. Are you getting me now? There are no demons to cast out of you again. What you need is transformation and that's what is happening. So miracle service is a time where God gives you an opportunity to extend the hand of mercy to many who otherwise will be buffeted by Satan. Are you getting my point? So every last Friday is an opportunity for you to draw somebody who is about to die of a terminal disease or a family that has suffered all kinds of things. Don't just come for miracle service alone. There's, there's hardly much teaching that we do during miracle service. It's a time of ministration. For many of you, where you really get blessed is the time of prophecy and maybe impartation. Not necessarily healing and deliverance. So why don't you become that agent of change? And go and fish men and say, look, you've got to be blessed. You don't know the Lord. You are not born again. Come. It's an opportunity for you to start putting to work that which the Lord is committing unto you. Hallelujah. God rules the heavens and the entire kingdom through mysteries. God has deep knowledge. He has secrets. The Bible reveals certain mysteries. I'm going to run through them. Get the tape. We may not have time to read the verses one by one. Mark chapter 4 verse 1 talks to us about the mystery of the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 talks to us about the mystery of resurrection. He said, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, but we shall be changed. So we see Paul, I show you a mystery, a mystery, a mystery. Ephesians 1 verse 9, Paul speaking about the mystery of God's will that was committed unto him. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 3, Colossians 1, 25 to 27 talks about the mystery of Christ. So Christ, understanding Christ cannot be through head knowledge. It's a mystery. It is through the illumination of the spirit that you will understand. 
please are you following me Ephesians 5 verse 32 talks about the mystery of marriage about a man and a woman hello you don't you don't understand marriage because you are old marriage is a mystery that takes the spirit Paul began to talk to us and he said this is a mystery and in it I talk about Christ and the church Ephesians 6 verse 19 talks about the mystery of the gospel this gospel that we preach is a mystery 2nd Thessalonians 2 verse 7 talks about the mystery of iniquity and I'll touch a bit on this when I start talking on the ecclesia the mystery of iniquity a secret code that Satan uses it is the mystery of iniquity that can bring what we call transgenerational causes is the mystery of iniquity that can bring what is called spells and pronouncements upon people iniquity iniquity is not sin to sin means to err to default first timothy 3 verse 9 talks about the mystery of faith holding forth the mystery of faith with a pure conscience it talks about the mystery of faith this faith, faith, faith that people talk about is a mystery. That's why many people talk about faith and have no results because they teach faith from a scientific perspective. But when you are given illumination, this faith is a mystery. 1 Timothy 3 verse 16 talks about the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness. This was the mystery that John Lake understood. That God can come and become a man. And something happened in John Lake's life. No sickness could touch that man. He made Spokane one of the healthiest city in the entire world during his time. Revelations 1 verse 20 talks about the mystery of the seven stars. These were mysteries that were given John in the Isle of Patmos. When he was caught up to the third heavens. The mystery of the seven stars. Revelation 17 verse 5. Calls Babylon a mystery. Ah. What is Babylon? Babylon is the prophetic representation of the satanic kingdom and its operation. Adumbrated in a city called Babylon. The physical Babylon was a reflection of the spiritual Babylon just like the tabernacle was a reflection of the tabernacle in the heavens are you getting my point now so a physical manifestation of Babylon and the Bible says Babylon itself that system is a mystery Revelation 17 verse 17 and I will show you the mystery of the woman a woman is a mystery Brothers, stop blaming yourself. A woman is a... It takes revelation. What did I say? It takes... Do you know why a woman is a mystery? Because there are many aspects of a woman that it takes light for you to know. Let me give you two. Number one, a woman is a gate in the spirit. Why is she a gate? The only gate that can birth another life. You think God just put womb in a woman. Why didn't they put womb in an animal? Just get pregnant and drop the seed in the animal. No. A woman is a gate in the spirit. You will now see the reason why if you pray deliverance for 10 people, about 8 of them will be ladies. There is a reason why Satan loves ladies. It's not for sex. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let the devil anoint one man and he can conquer ten men. Let Satan anoint one woman. She doesn't need to conquer men. She will go to the king that rules those people. Jezebel. Are you seeing that now? A representation of the men. Elijah conquered hundred people. Jezebel made the prophets of God to go and hide. One woman. You see why she's a mystery? When a woman says she's going to deal with you, start fasting. 
Keep calling them weaker vessels. That if a woman tells you, you will see. Run fast. Run. We talk very little about wizards. But we talk so much about witches. First Corinthians 4 verse 1. Let's, let's finish up. The mysteries of God. God himself is a mystery. That's why all this Scientology and these junks that attempt to explain God from a three-dimensional plane. Forget about all those things. God himself is a mystery. Tongues are a mystery. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. We speak mysteries. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 about the hidden mysteries, the wisdom of God shrouded in a mystery that the princes of this world did not know. Hallelujah. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Dominion. The true revelation of dominion. Pray. Say, Lord, open my eyes. There is something I need to know. There is something I need to see. There is a realm of power I need to step in. Pray for the sake of your family. Pray for the sake of our nation. Pray for the sake of your children. Open me up to the hidden truths of the spirit. Cause my eyes to see. Let the veil be taken off my eyes, O God. That I will walk in power for real. Not as a man of God, but as an ambassador of the kingdom. Give me explanation to the happenings around my life. Let me understand the system that keep tossing my life to and fro. Show me the codes, oh God. Open my eyes and let me see. Uncover puzzles in my life. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. I will sing. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will forever sing your praise. Listen. When you catch the revelations I'm sharing with you, you can look at a man and alter the course of the devil in his destiny with the power of the word. That word will live on the strength of the mysteries you have and no power in existence. You see what makes the spoken word powerful? It's not just about speaking. A lot of people keep speaking. He said, upon this rock, there must be a rock that you build on. That where you speak, it will come to pass. That rock 
is the comprehension of this hidden truth. That was why he told John, he said, seal it up. This is for an appointed time. Close it. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the seals. And the elder tapped me and said, do not weep. The book can be opened. When you catch these mysteries, you can walk to a sick body. And while you look at that person, there are so many revelations that will stream from you that without touching the person, he gets healed at once. Because your revelations exert a force in the spirit. Are you getting me now? Demons celebrate on the strength of believers. They know we are ignorant of the mysteries of the kingdom. So that even when we are praying, we are praying out of ignorance. And our prayers, much effort, but it generates very little results. And we come back sweating. And we believe that on the strength of our sweating, it should happen. Je listen, Jesus, the custodian of the mysteries, when he came, the demons said, ah, you have come to destroy us. You know every law it takes to check us out. So we beg you. When will it happen in your life? When you will walk into your house and people will start calling you and say, please, I want to see you. And you say, you know I'm, I'm a witch, right? I'm going to pack out peacefully. I've been oppressing your people. And like Jesus, you will say, go. Out, never to return. What many prophets have come to swindle your parents of all their money, you step in as an ambassador. And every time they say something is writing, like a doctor, while they are talking, God is talking to you. And you look between the lines and you tell them, I have come to stay evil. This is not about man of God. You look at a woman who is buried and you understand the mystery of creation. Not just the mystery of healing. Not just the mystery of creative miracles. The mystery of creation. And the woman says, I have a damaged fibroid. All of a sudden, many scriptures start firing in your head. How Elijah bathed and God healed. How many things happened. And on the strength of that revelation, you say it is possible. Madam, you will go back and come with your child. I remember somebody who walked to Adeboe. They were, I mean, um, um, Abioye, David Abioye, Bishop David Abioye. And he was going to his office and the husband and wife, they came and they said, Daddy, we have been, you know, we've been trusting God, no child. And Adeboe turned and looked at the man. He said, Mr. Man, you better get this woman pregnant before the next time. And that's how he left them. That was the end of it. There was a revelation. Male and female, he created them. A woman is not a man. Are you getting me now? That's the revelation that can enter you and you can get to the place of prayer and say, Lord, if you created them male and female, where is the male version of my life? I'm tired of singleness. Male and female. That alone is a revelation. See, talk does not make the realm of the spirit scared. Talk does not drive demons. There is a light. There is a light that you carry to the realm of the spirit. And it is that light that brings power. And through the greatness of that power, every enemy will submit. Hallelujah. Ecclesia. Everybody write. The Ecclesia. The church is one mystery. This is really the topic for tonight. The Ecclesia. E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A. e double k L-E-S-I-A. Let us understand the Ecclesia tonight very briefly before we pray. Matthew 16 from verse 18 and 19. The Ecclesia. Matthew 16. Can you project it for us please? And amplify it. Now look up, please. Let me give a little background. Can I have two or three people? Just any two or three people. Just stand here. 
I want to show you something. Who's this? Pastor Sam, anybody? Thank you. Look up. In ancient times, I told you that kings reigned through mysteries, right? There were certain people in every kingdom called knights. K-N-I-G-H-T. Everybody write that word down, knights. Grant us revelation, oh God. These men called knights, look at me. They were a special selection. They were not military men alone. They were what we call the highest level of the intelligence of that kingdom. Are you getting me? They went to special training from martial art to astrology. Are you following me now? To science, to all biology. They were learned in every area. Now, these knights were the custodians of the secrets and the mysteries of that kingdom. Hallelujah. It was given to those knights. How many of you, I said it last week, how many of you have watched these kinds of films where they go and hide treasures under a rock somewhere in a kingdom, all right? And there may be a magic word until you can pronounce the magic word, then the door will open. Only the knights had knowledge of this. Hallelujah. If the kingdom were about to be destroyed, they know where to escape with the king and other people. They had secret entrances in and out of the kingdom. These knights were the ones that we call apostolos. Titus 1 verse 1. That's where we get the word apostle. They were a special people set apart and sent as envoys of the king. So if, for instance, they came to capture maybe the queen or any nobleman in the land, even when they destroy all the military people, are you getting me? They can send just three knights. Three knights alone can go and subdue a whole kingdom and bring back the queen. And then the king will crown them. Some of you read about Obama doing it to the military, right? They crown them. They increase them in ranking. Hallelujah. This concept of knighthood and let me call it apostleship and, and, and uh, ambassadorship. This is the platform on which we will be able to understand the ecclesia. God bless you, sirs. The word church, please listen. The word church is not a religious terminology at all. Are you getting me? The word church has nothing to do with religion. The word church is a governmental terminology. Ecclesia. It's a governmental language. It's a political language. That word ecclesia, what does it mean? It means the called out ones. The separated ones. The trained ones. The commissioned ones. Ecclesia. It's not about a building at all. It's not about a pastor and a congregation. No. Ecclesia is a governmental language. It's a language that is used to describe envoys. Men who were trained with military intelligence, with all kinds of intelligence, sophisticated men, men of dexterity and intelligence, they were sent by the king. The first use of that word was by Jesus himself in Matthew 16 from verse 18 and 19. We need to understand what the church really is. Hallelujah. Then we can compare what we know today to be church as against the pattern of God. Because you see, the structure of the kingdom is such that it must be done in the earth as it is in the heavens. That means we must reproduce the pattern of things. And one of the manifestations of the spirit of Elijah is to set in order. You bring order. You restore the patterns of the tabernacle of David. 
Matthew 16 verse 18. Let's hurry up. Wherever we can stop, we must not necessarily finish. Matthew 16. Verse 18. And I say unto thee, Jesus speaking, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my, whose church? I will build my, he said, and the of shall prevail. The same word that was used for Jacob and, the, and God. Uh, prevail, prevail, a contention. So, the first description of church gives it a military description. Are you following me now? The moment church is mentioned, the next word is gate of not nice chairs and pews. The church, the gates of hell. The church, the gates of hell. What is the church? The church is God's system. The church is God's strategy for enforcing the kingdom. The church is God's system for restoring back his original pattern. The church is God's system, is God's strategy, is the name of the mystery that God will use to restore all things. It's called the church, the ecclesia. Are you following me now? The church is a mystery. That's why many people go to Bible schools, theological schools, and we do not understand church. We study homiletics, we study everything we can study. But then we may never understand it except the Spirit of God opens our eyes. Listen, the concept of church had always been in God's mind right from the Garden of Eden. It didn't just come in the New Testament. Are you getting me? God's idea was for Adam and Eve to give birth to their first child in the garden. Are you getting me? So that the child can see how the garden looks like and the lifestyle, the kingdom lifestyle in the garden. And then they begin to reproduce that pattern across the entire earth. Satan knew it. That's why he attempted to thwart the plan. So the first child was born outside Eden. So he never had an understanding of how the life of Eden would be. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. From that time, God desired a people whom he would call and bring to himself. He wanted a people that he would consecrate and give his values, his agenda, his vision. God's idea has never changed. God's agenda has not changed. Time has changed. Technology has changed. But God's vision, God's universal agenda is still in force. Exodus 19 from verse 1 and 6. When you read that, you begin to see the pattern. For time's sake, we may not read. God began to communicate his desire to separate a people that he would be their God and they would be his people. His people who were consecrated unto him. And then God found a man called Abraham. The first manifestation of the ecclesia after Noah. Hallelujah. You see the reason why God called Noah. Are you getting me? His three sons, their three wives, separated them and destroyed the earth. A corruption happened again. It had always been the contention between the agenda of God and the manifestation of the gates of hell. Now Abraham came, an idol worshiper, and he said, Abraham, come out of thy father's house. I call you out. Be a called out person. Be separate. And if you do that, then I will bless you. Then I will do all of this and that. Genesis 12 verse 1 and 2. And then God called the man called Moses. And it was Moses that took the people from Egypt. 
out through the Red Sea. And God gave them laws and ordinances. Now, please listen. I'm going to say some things that will disturb you this night. Laws and ordinances were what separated the people of God from other nations. Are you getting me? They had laws and they had ordinances. That was what created a distinguishing feature between the nation of Israel and other hedonistic nation. For instance, they had a law that they should not eat blood. So if other nations were eating blood, the nation of Israel did not eat blood. And so that marked them out to be a separate people. The laws and ordinances that were given through Moses to the nation of Israel marked them out as a separate people. Another thing is that God's people had a culture. Write it. Culture is the way of life of a people. Look, we must understand this. Otherwise, we'll, we'll keep playing games in the church. The kingdom has a culture. But what we teach in church now is coming to the kingdom with any culture you want. As long as you name the name of Christ, that's trash from the pit of hell. The kingdom has a culture. Its own culture. Hallelujah. When you travel to the Yoruba land, they have a culture. And if you intend staying there long enough, you had better start learning the culture. When you go to Igbo land, they have a culture, a way of life. When you come to the north, they have a culture. When you come to the middle belt or down northeast, they have a culture. Every territory has a culture. Say after me, the kingdom has a culture. We cannot allow lawlessness to just happen in the body of Christ. There are all kinds of lawless things that happen in the body of Christ and we believe there is nothing wrong with it. When you understand kingdom, you will know that the kingdom of God has a culture. Hallelujah. From Matthew 16 verse 18 to 19, we see three things about the ecclesia number one that scripture reveals to us that god had an agenda that's number one he had an agenda that attempted to be thwarted by satan from adam but that his agenda is still in force and would be fulfilled that's the first thing that scripture reveals to us everybody say god has an agenda yes satan has tried through the ages to thwart the agenda of God. But I'm telling you that the gates of hell will not prevail. The agenda of God will still come to pass. What is the agenda of God? A restoration of the values, the ordinances of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Number two, it reveals to us that the biggest opposition to this agenda are the gates of hell. Don't mistake in it. The biggest agenda to this advancement is not the terrorists. It's not the godless people. It's not the unbelievers. But the gates of hell. That means everything you see around that physically attempts to limit the advancement of the kingdom was birthed and sponsored by the gates of hell. The greatest opposition to God's agenda is the gates of hell. What, what are the gates of hell? I need to explain this. The gates of hell describes Lucifer and all his strategies and the devices deployed to frustrate God's agenda. The gates of hell attempts to describe Lucifer and all the strategies and devices that he deploys to frustrate God's agenda. 2 Corinthians 2 from verse 10 to 11 tells us that we should not be ignorant of the devil's stratomai, his devices, his mysteries, his agenda. Do not be ignorant. Satan has a pattern. 
Satan has a blueprint. Part of his blueprint is how he will destroy your life. Part of his blueprint is how he will ruin Nigeria. Part of his blueprint is how he will take over the seven mountains and the spheres of influence. Part of his blueprint is how he will mislead and deceive pastors to derail from the patterns and the ordinances of God. So that the enemy can come and sow tears among the wheat. Part of his ordinances and his strategy is to defile the sacrament of marriage. He has a strategy. And if the church is ignorant, we are in trouble. Number three, it reveals to us that the system and the agency through which this global invasion, this restoration of God's pattern would occur is called the church. The church is God's system, is the mystery he revealed to advance and fulfill his agenda. Brothers and sisters, the church is first and foremost not about a Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday gathering of people. No, the church is not just about buildings. The first revelation about the church is that the church is a strategy. The church is a system through which God's agenda will be restored back. The Ecclesia first talks of a species of people. Write it down. The Ecclesia talks of a species of people. Reformers, revivalists, and ambassadors. So the first revelation of Ecclesia is that it talks of a special breed of people. A species of people. A kind of people called out, set apart. A breed of reformers, revivalists, ambassadors, not pastors, not just prophets, not just apostles, ambassadors. Everybody say ambassadors. That's the word we must focus on. We are focusing too much on pastor and apostle and prophet. No, the word is ambassador. The envoys that will carry this ideology to the system. Then number two, it talks of the institution that trains, builds, and equips these ambassadors. The ecclesia of God is also the institution that he put in place. Just like a terrorist camp, just like a, a platform that was built, just like a diplomatic training center. Are you getting my point now? To train, to build, and to equip these ambassadors and these envoys. To train men and women that will make a difference by becoming the difference. Not just make a difference by talking about it. Not just make a difference by designing posters and wearing shirts. Jesus is Lord. What good is wearing a shirt, Jesus is Lord, when your life is not a living epistle? And there are ministries that put all kinds of pressure on people. You must buy this and buy that to show you an ambassador. I'm not against that, but I'm telling you the highest symbol of an ambassador is not his attire. is that you become a written epistle. I can carry a shirt written Jesus freak and still be a thief. I can use that shirt to be sleeping with a lady and on it is written Jesus freak. I'm not against marketing the ideologies of the kingdom, but I'm telling you beyond all these external religiosities is that we must become the written epistles. Say amen. So the true concept of church starts with the hearts and the lives of men. Are you getting me? Not looking for land to build. Not looking for a cathedral to expand. 
when we talk about the institutional aspect of the church, we talk about that. But the average pastor, when he wants a church, the first thing he's thinking about is, where can I get land? Let me build my church in four months and make a name. Very, very wrong concept of the church. Hallelujah. The final thing I'll talk about before we pray is the process of becoming the ecclesia. Never let anybody fool you that being born again makes you the church. I'm going to show you right now. If the church, listen, the Bible says those he predestinated, he called. That's one level. Those he called, he justified another level. Those he justified, he glorified. There are processes in the kingdom. Mm. What is the process of becoming the ecclesia? That ambassador. And then how is the church as an institution supposed to function? According to God's New Testament pattern. Not according to a denomination. Not according to a sect. Not according to African tradition. According to the patterns and the ordinances of the kingdom. When the church functions as it's supposed to function, no power in existence will be able to stand against it. Because the Bible says, I will build my church. And the Bible says, we all like living stones being built into a spiritual house. So that church, we are the blocks that God will use and we become a formidable defense. And the Bible says, if we do it right, the gates of hell shall not prevail. You know why the church is being trampled? I will show you the revelation. The Bible says, if the salt has lost its savor, it is good for nothing, but it will be trampled by men, not demons. You see why men are trampling the church? They act Nigerian films and mock pastors. They act all kinds of things and discredit people. He said, if the church loses its sever, he gave us a sign. He said, when you see men trampling the church, they are losing its sever. Number one, the process of becoming the ecclesia. Number one is your entrance into the kingdom. This is what we call new birth. Please write it. Let's hurry up with these steps and then we'll pray. I want to close early today because of the bike issues. Entrance into the kingdom. New birth. Romans 8. From verse 8 to 10. And verse 13. The Bible gives us the condition for being saved. It says... Let me just turn there quickly. Let's save time. Romans 10, verse 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then verse 13 says, For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the first step. Brothers and sisters, not the only step to becoming the ecclesia. Those set apart ones, the ones that 1 Peter chapter 2 talks about, will go there before we round up. Number two is the putting off of the old man the second step to becoming the ecclesia the putting off of the old man another name for it is repentance through deliverance right i will explain it to you many people do not know what deliverance is and i know that they have been the concept of deliverance has been abused many people just think deliverance is about people rolling up and down and coughing out things and vomiting all kinds of things. No. 
That's not necessarily the entire scope of deliverance. Deliverance means to be separated from something. Are you getting my point? You must put off the old man if you truly want to walk as the ecclesia. Please don't let anybody confuse you. It is part of the necessary and sufficient condition to be the ecclesia, the light of the world. Ephesians 4 verse 22. Please help us media if we can rush it. Repentance. Deliverance. These things must happen to you. It is called the putting off of the old man. By deliverance, I don't mean hands are laid on you and then you roll and fall on the floor. No. I, I told you what repentance was. Aaron, can I use you again? It was with you I used you last week. Watch this. An ideology, a culture, a mindset, all right, is making Aaron to move a, to take a particular course in life. Is that true? When the word of God comes, right, the mystery of the gospel, when well taught and understood, should make the guy turn. Are you getting me? This turning, not the walking, the turning is what we call repentance. Are you getting me? The walking is not necessarily repentance. I will tell you the name. The turning away, your willingness to turn from your traditional way of thinking, from your denominational way of thinking, from your cultural way of thinking, by the power of God's word, is called repentance. And it is deliverance because there are forces strongholds that make men to act and behave that way and when that separation comes you are put off the old man the bible says that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to what deceitful lust lust there does not just talk about immorality it means that there is a craving please are you getting my point now this is the foundation of what we know to be the holiness movement, which is not wrong. But I will show you the imbalance and the imperfection of the holiness movement. If you put off a loan, listen, if you put off a loan, it's still not enough. How many of you know? That there are many people in church who are not sleeping around they are not drinking but the lust and the urge is practically killing them yes or no pastors reverends bishop so i don't i will not come and fornicate or do something with this lady because i am aware that god hates it is that true but in my mind there's all kinds of torture i don't want to steal I don't want to do malpractice just because there are people. If that loss is still there, you are not delivered. Are you seeing the limitation of the holiness movement? So they teach ordinances. Don't do this. Don't do that, which is good. But if you do not put on, that's the next thing. Put on. There is an ideology. There is a mindset that became a stronghold that drove you into that way of life. If you just turn mechanically without being free from the mindset, from that which causes you, you will stand although you may not commit the act of sin. That's what leads a lot of people into things like pornography and masturbation. Because we men of God are lords over people, supervising who slept with who and who. So because of that fear, they say, ah, let no lady come to my house so they can lock the door and download pornography to the demon is still there if you put off you must put on that's when true liberty occurs the process of becoming the true ecclesia number three the putting on of the new man we call that renewal and transformation so new birth 
repentance and deliverance. The next step is renewal and transformation. Paul was speaking to people who were already born again. They were already born again. A congregation of believers. And he says, do not conform to the thinking pattern of this age. But be ye transformed. Can you see transformation and renewal used? Be ye transformed by the renewing. So it is transformation that now pushes Aaron experientially. Are you getting me now? Out of this realm so that it no longer is not just that the Bible said it. But it has become his way of life. But a lot of people sing religiously. The things I used to do, I do them no more. But you are still thinking about it. You are still imagining it. To an extent that people have started preaching messages and said there's no man, there's no man anywhere who does not at any time imagine himself sleeping with a woman. Forget it, we're all human beings. People have coined messages to explain their refusal to put on. They have put off, but they are being frustrated. So you are seeing the church money. Something is pinching you. Can't I use this church money and build a bungalow? And you know that if you touch God's money, you know it will bring a curse on you. So the fear of that curse is keeping you, but you are dying slowly. Every time you see the finance department counting the money, you are almost dying. You are not yet free. You are saved, but you are not free. He said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is not only salvation, there is liberty. Many people in the church are saved, but I'm telling you, they are not free. You know what I'm saying is painful, but it's true. But God wants you to be free. He wants you to be free. Hallelujah. Everyone, God bless you. And then, listen, point number two and three is what produces perfect holiness. Please write it down. Putting off alone is not enough to know that holiness is in nature. That the Holy Ghost, the spirit of holiness comes upon you. He comes upon you to open you up to the possibilities of walking experientially in holiness. It is the grace for holiness he grants unto you that makes you to be able to walk. Please understand this. I know that there's a general concept of holiness in the body of Christ. That holiness is not what you do. Holiness is just what you receive. Please be careful. There is a very serious balance. Holiness is the work you, you walk onto it on account of the grace that came by the spirit of holiness. Not mechanically, not traditionally. Please get this. There's a lot of perversion in the body of Christ. I'm aware that there are men of God who sleep around with their congregations and have secured them with revelations that once you are born again, the Bible says this and that and that will have been engraved in his palm. The only thing that takes people to hell is this and that and that and so many people move i hope you know that one of the mysteries of iniquity is the mysteries of lawlessness please do not be deceived i want you to be a powerful church this is not the way our fathers walked and if we walk this way we are suffering right now because our parents in ministry they walk the path of true holiness but when they got prosperity and they arrived there, they changed the message and they gave us the younger generation. And we are, we are suffering. The fathers have eaten sour grapes and our generation now have become powerless. Because we are absorbing doctrines that may not be wrong, but they are not balanced. Hallelujah. The putting off of the old man through the spirit of God and the putting on of the new man renewed in righteousness is the complete concept of biblical holiness. Point number four. 
the process of becoming the ecclesia. Number one, entrance into the kingdom, new birth. Two, repentance through deliverance. Three, renewal and transformation. Number four is equipping and training the saints to establish and advance the kingdom. Are you seeing the process now? The fourth step is now the equipping and the training. This is where you now talk about the institution, church, the assembly of believers. This is the core function of the assembly of believers. Now listen, this equipping and this training of these prospective ambassadors to advance the kingdom is what the Bible calls discipleship. Write it down. Are you seeing that many things we have taught as discipleship is just familiarizing people with the ordinances of that denomination for the purpose of being baptized and receiving positions in the church. He may not be wrong in himself, in itself, but it's not the perfect ordinance of God. Discipleship is not about just coming somewhere and sitting down and indoctrinating people with concepts and theological ideas. No, discipleship is the ministry of the fivefold to the body, equipping them. What is happening right now is what discipleship is. Are you getting my point now? Unfailing to you the patterns and the concepts, the ordinances and the mysteries of the kingdom. That means the real goal of the church is not to keep members there forever. In its ideal form, a growing church is not necessarily a church with the largest crowd. A growing church is the church that has been able to effectively disciple people and release them to begin to advance the kingdom. Are you seeing our concept right now? There's nothing wrong with crowd. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying that there is a little twisting and is getting into error. Men of God believe that you are a great man of God and the kingdom is being advanced. If there are people here and there is an overflow outside and there are other people, then we say the kingdom is advancing. It is advancing if the people are being taught with the intent that they will begin to manifest as ambassadors. That means a church, if you are here in Koinonia for one year, two years, and you cannot find your place in destiny and begin to take the influence of the kingdom, we have failed as leaders and we are cheating you. Are you getting my point? It doesn't matter if Koinonia starts growing. It doesn't matter if Joshua Selman is becoming a famous man. That's not God's parameter for measuring the success of the church. Please, are you understanding me? Because some of you are under a lot of ministries. And with time, God is calling you. Some of you are already in ministry. Right now, get the record straight so that you don't get up in error, under pressure. If you are truly advancing the kingdom, God will send people to you. The Bible says, and God increased to their number daily as those who should be saved. It's God that brings increase. Paul can plant, Apollo can water, but true increase comes from God. The institution of the local assembly, the institution of platforms like Koinonia and different churches scattered across the globe, if they function properly, should be a powerful force in training people. Question. As we attempt to round up, let me ask you a question. Why is it that there are millions of churches, maybe, or hundreds of thousands in Nigeria, but the transformation as far as taking the ideology of the kingdom is very little? Why is that so? Could it be that there is a violation of God's pattern of church? Are you getting my point now? In every city, there are ministries, ministries like redeemed, who have gotten unusual grace to push beyond boundaries, push beyond territories. 
even where a church cannot be planted, you find their churches there. The power of the Holy Spirit at work in them and many other ministries. But the question is, there is a difference between the growth of a ministry and the advancement of the agenda of the kingdom. Koinonia can open branches all over and everybody can rejoice and we will celebrate only if that ecclesia, that institution is training and building people. The job of the man of God is not just to sit down in front and have water and have ushers and have an office with AC. Wonderful. Let his life be comfortable for as long as that ecclesia remains a true apostolic and prophetic platform. Please hear me. Your fellowship is an ecclesia. Your home cell is an ecclesia. It doesn't just mean a church with a name like Living Faith, Redeem, or, or all of the great ministries we have. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. Wherever there is a training and equipping, a building of people, where you are supplied the tools for advancing the kingdom, what are the tools? Influence, excellence, the anointing, prosperity, character, the message of the kingdom. Are you now seeing the context in which all these teachings come? So if I teach you on prosperity, if I just teach you so that you become a multi-millionaire and then sing a song and flaunt your cars and say God has been good to me, as good as that is, you are not an effective ambassador. Are you getting me now? So I can be comfortable to teach prosperity on the strength of the fact that you are aware that I'm teaching it as a tool for kingdom advancement. I can teach character knowing that you are aware that it is a tool for kingdom advancement. Are you getting my point now? Every other teaching is a means to an end equipping you to take over, to bring the influence of the kingdom. And then the final stage of becoming the ecclesia is what I call the execution. Write it. The execution. Where you have now been equipped. The equipping is ongoing. But that you should be able to be equipped enough that you can start working while you are still learning. I call it the execution. What is the execution? Fulfilling the go ye command. That means you have been equipped. Jesus walked with the people. Even when Paul was coming to the end of his ministry, Paul kept saying that I may know him, but it, not, it did not stop Paul from planting churches and building things. So that you are still learning is not an excuse. If you are really growing, a time should come, you should join part of the Go Ye team to now start saying, all right, we have been equipped. It's time to begin to go. And the Bible says, go ye into where? Cosmos. Everybody write cosmos. I've taught it conquering cosmos. I won't go into there again. What is the execution? Taking the message, the influence. Please write. I hope you're writing this same thing on Facebook. Please, and all the social media, let them understand what I'm saying. The execution means fulfilling the go ye command. It means taking the message, the influence, and the power of the kingdom to all the mountains and the spheres of human existence. Obeying the go ye command that you have now been trained. Can I have four people? All of you here just come from Mama. Please come. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Step one, they have come. 
indicating their interest to serve God. Praise God. Just come towards me, guys. Step two is that they undergo a process of the putting off through the word of God. Everything happens by the word. Are you getting me now? Delivered from all their ideologies, uh, witchcraft, all every kind of thing. Step three, they put on the new man by the power and the spirit of God. And then the equipping continues. And then a time comes, God begins to send them, you, go into politics and governance. You, go into arts and entertainment. You, become a pastor. Go into the mountain of religion. You, let me have three more people. One, two, three, four. There are seven mountains. You, go into the media. Mama, you like money, business. Go into business. Stand here. How are you now? Three people. You, go into the education. Go and become a professor. You, ah, this is the guy that would have gone into finance. Oh. Go into the family life. Be a good husband. Teach people. One, two, are you seeing that now? This is what we call goyi. Goyi is not just carry tract and talking and come and harass a brother with, with, and say, my brother, time is up. You are going to hell. I'm not saying that is wrong. But I'm saying if that is our concept of kingdom advancement, we are joking. A guy is quietly maybe trying to ask this lady out. He has been maneuvering this thing for weeks. And now is the moment to let it out. And it may not be demonic. Maybe it's a Christian brother. You just come in. You are talking for 20 minutes. They don't know your name. You just keep harassing the people. And say, do you know that hell is real? Blah, 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 blah. The way you are doing for the wages of sin is dead. You never ask the person whether he's born again. You never ask. Well, by God's grace, I will teach us on evangelism. How do you really evangelize? The person does not know your name. You just assume is a brother who wants to destroy that sister's life. Maybe it's even her pastor counseling her. Because the person may be wearing jeans and a t-shirt. Doesn't necessarily mean the person is a sinner. Now, you waste time, 30 minutes teaching and they keep quiet. At the end of it, they say, brother, we appreciate. We are born again. I say, oh, that's lovely. You have, you have wasted the time of the kingdom. You would have politely introduced yourself and then you know that you are brethren in this work. And then you can move on to make your job more effective. But it's not your fault. It's what you were taught and what you were told to do. So you obey to the latter. And that's why God is helping us. Please don't get me wrong. Tract evangelism and one-to-one -one evangelism are effective and they will remain effective forever. Are you getting my point now? But that we need to balance it off. The church is not about pastors. All of you come. Come and stand here. Come and crowd me here. And try to push me. Let me show you the nonsense that is going on in the body of Christ. Because we've taught them, if you want to advance the kingdom, be a pastor. Are you seeing it now? So Aaron has been trained. His potential is boiling. He doesn't know what to do. You've not taught him on purpose. Mama wants business. Or you're making church treasurer now. You didn't make. Are you getting my point now? So there is a lot of fight on the pulpit. And then Aaron gets angry. And Aaron breaks out and goes to France. To go and start his church. Not, that's not wrong. I'm not saying everybody leaving a church is necessarily of the devil. There are people God really spoke to. Are you getting my point? But there are many people on the pulpit that have no business with pulpit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I've told Pro Aaron is an apostle. I've told this guy you are a prophet. I've said you are an evangelist. I've said you are, you are a prayer warrior. I've said you are, you are what? You are a pastor. I've said you are a Bible study teacher. A businessman. You see, it, it changes quickly. He really likes business for whatever reason. Praise God. This is what we have taught people. So every young man in church envisages the ladies, their passion is to see who is the pastor. And when one brother who is not a pastor just comes and says, sister, good afternoon. She, mm -mm, don't even start. I know where you are going. Don't waste your time. I'm going to marry a pastor. Because what you have been told is that except you stand behind this pulpit, 
you are not advancing the kingdom. And the lady in her innocence said, ah, if that's the way to advance the kingdom, let me be a help meet to whoever has shown seriousness to advance this kingdom. So the other brothers are considered to be unserious people in the church, no matter how effective they are. And it puts pressure on them. People start coming up with false visions. People start creating their little Bible studies because they want to respond to their concept of kingdom advancement. But a true apostolic church builds people and lets them know that the businessman is as effective as the pastor. Are you getting my point now? That the person who goes into fashion designing is also an apostle in his own respect. So I salute him, although he may be a member of my church, but I never degrade him. Although I trained him, I salute him and I tell him, go with this fashion. Let ladies stop exposing their breasts left, like and center because they think it's fashion. Get that junk out of the fashion world. Receive illumination from the spirit. Are you getting my point? Take the fashion mountain so you will receive the same impartation as if you are a pastor, but it's to send you to that mountain. And you will go with confidence. It, as a fashion designer, the prophetic is working in your life. You are receiving blueprints of designs and the businessman is making money for you. Are you getting my point now? The other person is marketing what you have said in the media. When that happens, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Are you getting me? Because in the government, there is an ambassador. On our reality TV show, we'll not be showing people who can listen to the language of grass. Rather, it's not that you must say Jesus in your television program. Let me tell you something. There is a light and a power. There is an effulgence that your programs are directed after the order of the pattern of the kingdom. It does not mean you come up and say, look, everybody, you are an unbeliever, but you teach about character. When you start with family values that are consistent with the principles of the kingdom, you now begin to enter cosmos. The sons of the kingdom are not wise. That's the reason why we are not moving forward. So before your program, you are praying in tongues for one hour and you talk to the prayer warrior and he's praying. Although you have a secular, in quote, a secular TV station, maybe a new station, but you have prayer warriors at the back. Just like all the rich men have the people that enchant for them. So the prayer warriors are praying. That's their ministry. They are prayer warriors. They are counselors and they are paid to do it. Hello? Did you hear what I'm saying? I see a lot of religion paid to pray, of course. This man is married. What do you want him to go and tell his wife? After praying from morning till night, for you to advance your kingdom. You did business and they paid you. You preached and they gave you honorarium. I'm not saying go and start telling people, you better drop money, I've learned my lesson. If you ever come to me for counseling without money, uh-uh. Please go back, please. The ecclesia is the light of the world. The ecclesia is the hope of our generation. The ecclesia is this mystery man that God is raising. Are you getting me? A man is not just a human being. A man can be a system. That was what the king saw in his dream. He saw a man standing the head of gold, the feet of clay. That man was a description of many dispensations. So this man called the church, the body with Christ being the head of this man called the ecclesia. Together they have become an unbeatable team. This is what we call koinonia, the spirit and the bride walking together. The spirit and the bride walking in the business world. The spirit and the bride walking in the educational realm. The spirit and the bride walking in family. The spirit and the bride walking in churches. The spirit and the bride. Are you seeing that now? So, your Christianity does not just become to build branches and churches, but that you take over a mountain. Advancing the kingdom 
is the resultant effect of this order. And if we do this very well, we will be hastening the return of our king. Let our king be lifted up. Oh, Hosanna. Hallelujah. Aaron, for instance, please stand up, Aaron. Aaron is now heading the editing unit of what, what newspaper? Daily Trust. He's now heading the, the... Look at, when did he start? Because of this kingdom mentality, God said, this guy will be an ambassador. And within a short time, God has taken him to Joss to now head the editorial unit. Are you seeing now? That's an ambassador. Right now, he's listening to this. So if somebody brings any junk in the paper, he will throw it in the trash because he's the editor. Do you think God will lift him? Are you getting my point now? My dear, please come. Oh yeah, now. This is a career woman. She likes books very well. Now, God is taking her to great places because she loves education. She has a dream of working in one of the, where did you even tell me? One, one, just tell me one of them. You know, all this UN and all of this place. Now, that's not wrong. Do you think if they go and they are discussing how to kill and wipe Africans, is it not votes they count? Will she vote it? Are you getting me? So she's doing her own evangelism among the kings there. Through word of knowledge. When one king is sick and sickness whips the living daylight out of him, she uses her influence to go to his house and say, although I'm a UN worker, I lay hands on you in the name of Jesus. That's your own church. That's your own pulpit. If that king arises, he's, he's now born again. Two votes are there. A time will come. That's what happened to Daniel. Daniel was part of the parliament in Babylon. And he single-handedly made the king to confess that nobody should speak against the God of Daniel. So when they talk about passing gay rights, you just say, no way. For this reason and that reason. And because you have the spirit of wisdom, God will give you the facts to support it beyond the realm of human beings. Bless you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Then God will raise some dangerous apostolic businessmen. Not businessmen that will take the bull by the horn. They will behead the bull at once. You know what the bull is? The bull is the symbol of commerce. Is a God. When you see people saying bull, the bull is a God. Go to the New York Stock Exchange. Right in front of it, you see the drawing of a bull. It's a God. That's the God of commerce. You don't need to take the bull by the horn. Behead it. Let the dragon die. And you speak and say, it's time to bring in massive kingdom wealth for the kingdom. And whilst you bring it, in, in a month or in a year, you are making 60 billion naira and you just calculate 5 billion koinonia, 10 billion living faith. This one, that, that's how you are this. You are a real kingdom financier. No coercing, no lying. You are doing it as a ministry. Meanwhile, 5 million for your wife to go to Hawaii. Come on now, God punish the devil. The Bible says, see, the Bible says, if you walk on the altar, live by the altar. Hallelujah. And you are now thinking, two billion naira for evangelism. I'm sowing this into Capro ministry. And you check, you see a ministry like God TV saying we need five million. We need five million. And you say, come on, Lord, we are bigger than this. You tell your business partners, our profit for this month is going to God TV. And God gives you intelligence. You have such a great returns and you communicate it. Everybody say kingdom advancement. If they have not been teaching you this, you have not been in church. Are you hearing me? We will never advance the kingdom when we are some bunch of whims and broke people waiting for somebody to give 20,000 and you sit down, they say today we have declared that based on our august mood swing there will not be work in two weeks, he's traveling to India to go and consult a God and then the helpless believers just sit down, they say they are slashing your salary into half 
So you will now get 10,000. Will you ever think of kingdom advancement with 10,000? Say, I refuse to be poor. Say it. This is the balanced view of prosperity. Not just to buy jeeps. You will buy it. But how many can you enter at a time, brothers and sisters? You can't cross your leg on two jeeps and say, drive it like that. You have to see one at a time. We are going to rise up and pray. The ecclesia. Say, I am the ecclesia. I represent the church. The agency for transformation, for reformation, for renewal. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lord, I thank you for the revelation of your word. We are the ecclesia by the mysteries of the spirit. Until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God, they will bow one day. Dagon will bow and the church will again rise as the city upon the hill. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation. Come on, pray in tongues, Koinonia. God is counting on you. God is counting on you to take that mountain Pay the price. God is counting on you to take the mountain of education. pray I put off the old man there's no time to walk in the flesh I put off the old man there's no time playing church games there's no time to walk in sin the spiritual urgency there is an urgency upon the ecclesia of God we are the envoys for transformation we are the envoys of power we will challenge systems we will challenge the giants hallelujah hallelujah two prayer points and we're out of here prayer point number one you're going to say lord i receive grace to stay and be trained and be equipped to be an effective ambassador lift your voice and pray it's not just about going if you are not equipped you will be frustrated it's not just about going if you are not equipped the giants will destroy you there are giants in this mountain there are giants in this mountain lord i know you are sending me I know you are sending me. I know you are sending me. Apostolos, the envoys of power, the envoys of grace. We represent the embassy of heaven. It has been given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Now, I'd like you to pray this one like your life depends on it. You're going to say, Lord, I'll combine two prayer points in one. Show me the mountains, oh God, that you have anointed me to take and grant me the grace to subdue those mountains. Lift your voice and pray. Show me, oh God. Pray, 
koinonia. Show me the mountain, oh God. I have been anointed like Joshua and Caleb. Give me the mountain. Show me. Show me the mountain. I'm tired of walking around purposelessly. I am tired of walking around escorting others. Lord, I've been in Koinonia for a long time. Show me the mountain. I thought kingdom advancement is all about preaching and being a pastor. But now I know that there are financial apostles. Now I know there are education apostles. Now I know there are media apostles. Now I know there are family apostles. Please prophesy. Pray. Grant me grace. Pray now. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. I will take that mountain for you. Lord, take me there and I will subdue for you. Take me to the media. I will become the best of quality media and I will do it for you in excellence. Take me to the business world. I will conquer it for you. I will conquer it for you and supply finances for kingdom activities. Make me a pastor. Make me an apostle. Make me a prophet. And I will cause havoc in the kingdom of darkness. I will correct the errors of the Father. I will set once again the altar of our God. Pray for your destiny. Your life depends on it. Your relevance in the kingdom depends on the role you play. Hallelujah. Listen. When you find your place, you will never be idle one more day in your life. You will never hate yourself again. All this comparison, all this inferiority, low self-esteem, it dies at once because you know that there is a mountain with your name on it. And you will focus on it. Are you getting me? There are some of you, you are sent to the education realm. All you have is a BSc. That's not enough to take the mountain. Go for your masters. If it takes getting another degree again, go for it. If it takes being a professor, go for it. So that it will give you influence. Everybody say influence. You need influence to legislate on the kingdom. Don't let anybody say you are 30 years old. Who say you cannot school as 30? Go and do your masters. Get the best of the best of the best results. And then soar with wings as an eagle. You believe God is calling you into the business world. Business is not all about money. Sustain a level of intelligence that when you speak with your contemporaries, they will know that the spirit of God is at work in your life. Stretch yourself beyond limit. Challenge yourself to be the best. Knowing that this is a symbol of your dedication to the king and his kingdom. Are you following me now? If you are a conference speaker, challenge yourself. Tell yourself you will be the best. Not just some local champion. Educate yourself. Pay the price. If God is calling you into the fivefold ministry, labor in the word, labor in prayer to be an extraordinary man of God. That when you enter a place for a meeting, rattle the gates of hell. Don't just go and come out of a city and nobody knows. They call the apostles the men that turned the world upside down. Hallelujah. God is calling you to be a healing evangelist. Be an extraordinary one. Not a healing evangelist that keeps getting angry at other people because you will not rise up. Challenge yourself. 
This is a wake up call for many of us. We are the ecclesia. God is depending on us. So on Sunday when you go to church, don't just go to church with ritual as usual. When you come for koinonia, don't just come as usual. Know that you are not just coming to satisfy the ordinances of a religious movement. No. Koinonia is a platform and attempts to respond to the cry of the spirit that there needs to be a people. And if you are not properly trained, you will fail when you get there. Hallelujah. Father, lift your hands, everybody. Let's make a commitment to God. Right now that the millions have not entered your hand. Right now that you have not become a celebrity in the media. Right now that your album is not the best-selling Christian album in Nigeria yet. Make a commitment. And say, Lord, I declare my allegiance for you. Go ahead, talk to God. I lift my hands as a symbol. I will not fail you. Now I know you are depending on me. Millions of dollars will not take away my allegiance for you. I may be a politician, but I know where I'm coming from. I may be a banker. I may be a CEO of the biggest bank in West Africa. I may speak among unbelievers, but I know whose I am. I'm not confused. I may be a multi-billion dollar businessman traveling around and speaking with presidents, but I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Pray. I may be the greatest music artist in the next two years in Nigeria. Give me the song, so God, and all the shows will not take your place in my life. Pray. Make me that professor. Make me that vice chancellor. I want my paper, so God, to be of international repute. Take me there and watch what I will do for the kingdom. Make your commitment. You will remember this commitment in the days to come. Make a true commitment unto God. This lady has been tied down. Hallelujah. This is the cause of hardship on our family. There's nothing that they do that will succeed. It doesn't matter what happens. But right now, I instruct you because I see you in the spirit realm. Go. Go right now. Go. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go. The same thing is happening to that lady. Let her go now. Let her go. One or shall lay your hands on her. Both of them, both of them. Go, go right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I command in the realm of the Spirit. Go. Break chains. Hallelujah. Now listen, all the people in front here, God brought them out. I'm not speaking to them. I'm speaking to every spirit that was identified. You know my voice. At the count of three, I instruct you to let God's people go. At the count of three, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, you are leaving God's people now. One, two, three, go. Go, 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 Come out of them right now. Go, 
Come out of them now. Bring that lady. Bring that lady. Hey! I give the chains for them. This lady is acutely under demonic oppression. Acutely. Bring her. Chains for them. Chains falling. Come, just leave her. She will come. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. I hear How can a lady do this? Chains. Come back. Come and kneel down here. Right now. Leave her. Leave her alone. Come right now. Uh, you just leave her. You will see the power of God in this place today. Hallelujah. Listen. I want to pray for people with pain in the chest. A number of people with pain around the chest. Pain around the chest region. Hallelujah. Lay your hands there right now. Ulcer, peptic ulcer. Change. As she will come right here by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please lay your hands. As I pray for you, listen, a number of you are going to feel something just leave you. When that happens to you, please run and come out here. A no, you will literally feel something leaving you. When that happens, let's have those people here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lay one hand and lift one hand up. And let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just help me with a symbol. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. Whatever is holding you, peptic ulcer, be healed. I command that spirit out of them now. Out of them now. Out of them now. That spirit, leave them now. Be healed. Be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Now check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Hallelujah. I'm seeing someone with a severe pain on your kneecap. Just this kneecap. Very severe pain. In fact, it even affects you sometimes when you're walking. Where? Which of them? How long has it been? Okay. Lay your hands there. Both of you. Pastor, right? You're a pastor? Okay, no. I, I, lay your hands. That devil is a liar. Look at me. What's wrong with you? Huh? I've been having this knee problem. The bone is very tiny. The bone is tiny. And the load is heavy. And the load is heavy on it. Yeah. I even felt Hold my hands. Good. It's okay. Bone, grow. In the name of Jesus. Grow. I cast that them. Grow. I command you, grow. Grow. Lay your hands and I'll pray for you right now. As I lay my hands upon you, please test yourself and do what you couldn't do. Thank you, Jesus. Let the power of God come upon you right now. Please check yourself as I pray for you. Right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. God is doing miracles already. Check yourself. Any pain? Any pain? Yeah. Just no, no, no. Come on, give Jesus praise. God is healing people right now. Any pain? Any pain? 
Don't pretend it. Don't worry, God is healing you. Are you feeling any pain? Do what you couldn't do before. Look at this. Come on now. Look at this. Thank you, Jesus. Hold my hands. God is going to set you free. Hold my hands. We need to pray for you because I see you lying down. Touch that guy. Just look at me. God is setting your family free in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. What is this that I'm seeing? I'm seeing money, but it's tied with snakes. This is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is bringing financial restoration. Lord, let it be. I stretch my hands by the force of the Holy Ghost, using him as a point of contact in the name that is above all names. Let there be breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Victoria. Victoria. I'm hearing the name Victoria. Please, if I call your name or your case, just hurry up. We have a lot to do so that we can. Victoria. There are two Victorias outside. There are two Victorias that are supposed to come outside. Where are you coming from? Outside, yeah? Victoria. There's one more Victoria outside. Both of you are outside. The Lord will visit you. How are you, my dear? Are you married? Do you know why? Do you know why? That's one of the reasons why you came here, B. Is that not so? You were praying to God and you told God to visit you, man. Yes, sir. Is that, do you know me? No, Have sir. we talked with you? No, sir. The devil that has stopped your marriage must let you go, right? Amen. Now. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because there was a time a man came into your life and he, was, he looked like he was serious uh, for reasons you cannot even explain. Yes, he sir. just gave flimsy reasons and left. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know why he left? I don't know. This is what I'm telling you. I see this all the time. I'm seeing the face of an old woman. It's not your face I'm seeing. This is what is driving men from you. It doesn't matter what kind of man comes. Something must happen and he will leave. But tonight, we see the chains falling. Hold my hands. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I need to pray for you too. Lay your hands on your stomach. If I don't pray for you, when it's almost time for marriage, they are going to tell you that there is a cyst growing in your stomach. Because sometimes you feel pain. Is that not? Even now, the even now you are feeling pain. Yes, sir. Especially during your period. Yes. The pain is very I severe. And you have sometimes even irregular is when it's supposed to stop. It doesn't stop at that time. Yes, it is this thing you want to destroy. Hold my hands. Break chains. Break. You will feel like fire going through your stomach. The pain will go right now. Thank you, Jesus. Check yourself. Check it. Do hit yourself. Any pain. Any pain. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you. We call your husband, not a man, your husband. Wherever he is, I connect you. You will come and testify in the name of Jesus. This year, 2014, I lay my hands upon you and I release you to your marital destiny. Come, my dear. Where's your mother? Is she fine? I need to pray for her. The devil wants to put sickness in your mother. Father, for your mercy. I want to pray for somebody. Listen, this is a family and there is no reason to be embarrassed. That lady on pink, just touch her. Come. No, just where she stand there. Look at me. Lift your hands and look at me. Just look at me. Father, as you deliver her, 
let the power of God go to her family. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the power of God touch you and set you free and set your family members free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all out? Eh? You are all Victoria. There's someone here. Please, don't feel embarrassed. They took you to a harbor list. Listen. They took you to a harbor list and they gave you something to drink. Please, who is that person? I'm not saying you are bad. This is not, this is a family. Please, it's very important. The Lord is instructing me. I want to pray for you and break that thing. Please. This is a family thing. It's not even like it's just you. Please, we need to break this. There's, there's no reason to be embarrassed. Hallelujah. Can I pray for your mother? Hold my hands. Father, sickness will never return to the mother. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come, Victoria. Look at me. God visit your family. Please, this person I've spoken about, please make sure you come out. Don't, don't be embarrassed. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. They took you to a harbor list. They gave you something. One kind of, you are the one? Is he the one? You are the one? This thing is affecting you. Wait, stand up. Look at me. Don't feel bad. Just stand up. Stand up. Let me talk to you. Look at me. If I don't pray for you, you will die this year because this thing is going to kill you. Are you getting my point? That's why I called you out. Please remove his glasses. Hold it for it. Let, let it not break. Hold my hands. Because this guy sees dead people in his dreams and he doesn't even know why. Hold my hands. Hold it with both of your hands. The power of God will come through your body right now and you'll be delivered. Blotting out every handwriting and ordinance. Right now, be free. Everything you have taken inside your body that is destroying you, go. Be free right now. Sister, let me pray for you. Look at me. There is bad luck in your life. Everything works well for others until it gets to your point. Huh? Is that true? We need to pray very seriously. Even you, you are worried about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right? You see, listen, it's either you are for God completely. Part of the reason why a lot of people get into trouble is that you're halfway with God, halfway with something else. Hallelujah. Tonight, part of what will happen to you is that a fire will be planted in your spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I pray for you, my dear? Look at me. Why am I seeing rings on your hand? Physically, there are no rings, but I'm seeing rings on all your ten fingers. Look at me. I need to pray for you. Huh? You need to be very, very serious with God. Welcome home. God loves you. And he wants to transform your life. Huh? But for now, you'll be delivered. Right? Thank you, Jesus. Right now, I curse this spirit. Leave her now. I see you in the realm of the spirit. And it's time for you to go. Take away this devilish thing you are put in her life. Right now. Out. I hear the chains falling. not standing in for yourself but for your elder sister God wants to visit her lay your hands on your stomach because what is happening to her will happen to you Lord I take out anything you did not plant in her sister's body even right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be restoration in the name of Jesus Christ I need to break the spirit of loss from your life. Huh? I need to break it. I'm not saying you're a bad girl. Are you getting my point? Hold my hands. 
Just look at me. You are a devil of darkness. Leave this girl now. Go! Out of her now. Break chains. Break chains. Your eyes is open, but in the spirit you are blind. And God needs to open your eyes. That's why you are in a lot of confusion. Father, let her eyes be open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the spirit of timidity from your life. And you too. Same thing. Same thing. Out. Leave her. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Just look at me. Lord, set her free from this pain. Something will come upon you right now. And that demonic pain will go. Let her go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where's the woman that came with her family from Abuja? Is she here? Quickly, madam, come with all your children. Please, all of them. Celebrate them as they come quickly. Break. Your time of visitation has come. That devil that oppresses you. Just give flowing strings. Please just play something for me. Witchcraft. This is what is destroying the whole family. Witchcraft. This is not just the issue of prayer and fasting. This is the issue of deliverance out of this. Right? Where is the son? Come. Something comes upon you. You feel like something comes upon you. And when it comes upon you, you do a lot of destructive things. You will even have power that ordinarily you won't be able to have. Is that true? You feel that kind of thing? Yeah. You'll be delivered. Yeah. Right? Amen. Madam, I need to pray even for the finance of the family. It's not like you are lazy, but you are suffering for nothing. Is that true? Please help us. Is this mic working? Hallelujah. Don't worry. We'll just use one. Is that? Yes, sir. I need to pray for you. Huh? When someone works so hard, so hard, and then in the end of it, there is nothing to write home about. It's an error, but the Lord will correct it. My brother, the Lord bless you. You're born again. You love Jesus. Yes, Just you or your children. Myself and my children. Hold my hands, my brother. Look at me. Jesus will set you free right now. Right? You believe that? Hold my hands. Let's cast that devil of darkness out of your life. Father, by your mercy. In the name of Jesus. Go! That's the end. It's free. I need to pray for you. You're going to feel like fire from my hands to your hands. And within two weeks, you will have a major financial restoration. Two weeks. You believe it? Jesus, confirm your word right now. Out of her, now. Out of her, that devil of darkness. I command financial restoration for you. Where are the children? Both of you. You love God. You are going to teach the word. You. Huh? This boy, he's going to love God and he's going to, you know this now. God has already told you. Yes, he has been God has told you. He, he, he has, has been, been into it. He, he has, has been, been into it. Yes. Because the Lord showed me. I saw him standing with a Bible. And the Lord says he will teach the word. Hallelujah. I'll pray for you. You don't teach the Bible just with English. There is an anointing. Tonight I lay my hands upon you. Let that spirit of wisdom and understanding. 
come upon you right now. Step into a new dimension. I open your understanding to understand scriptures in the name of Jesus Christ. You love God, but we must pray so that because of the quest for establishment, you will not join bad people. You want to be successful, but what God does not give you, you cannot get. Huh? Because there are bad people around your life. You are a good person, but there are all kinds of bad people, and we must pray. Huh? Lay your hands on your chest. There's something that will leave you. You did not even know when you started fraternizing with what is not of God. But tonight, my God, let there be deliverance. You are literally going to feel something leaving your chest right now. Let him go. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Restore this family, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Go and return with your testimony. Where is the guy that has been skipping from university to university? His sister brought him. Are you here? The last Nsuka, bring him quickly. His time of deliverance has come. Everywhere this guy goes, spirits torment him. He has, come and come and stand here. This is your night of visitation. It's over. Look at this guy. Listen. I want you to appreciate what God is doing in this place. There are people whose lives are, I'm not saying clap. The greatest gift you can give anybody is not money, it's not car, it's to bring him to a place where he can find genuine restoration. Hallelujah. How many universities? Come, you are, come. Are you not the one who brought him? How many universities? Same university. They've, they've driven him? Twice. Twice. You think it's normal for somebody to get admission twice? UNN, right? Nsuka? Yes, sir. God will deliver him. Amen. Come, my brother. It's not... It's not like you are lazy. Huh? It's not like you are lazy. Because I'm seeing something like foam on his mouth. And you cannot even articulate. It's, like, it's as if you are manipulated. God is going to set you free. You believe this? Yes. Lord, you reign forever. Lord, Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Something will leave you right now. And you'll be free. Let him go. Now. Lord, restore to him. The years that the canker worm has eaten. Restore to him. The years that the palmer worm has eaten. In the name of Jesus Christ. Restore to him. Restore to him. Let him rise up a brand new person. I worship you. Hallelujah. If there's any case of barrenness here, whether for yourself or for your loved ones, please come out here. If you're married and you're experiencing barrenness, let them stand in the front. If you're standing here for yourself, Please don't just be emotional. We are not joking here. This is very serious business. Look at me. Look at me. Listen. Let me tell you something. And don't please don't find it offensive. Every case of barrenness is demonic. What did I say? Every. every I don't care what the doctors say. Whether they say there is a womb or no womb. The, the person... Who is having this situation may not be a bad person. But I'm telling you, it must be resolved spiritually. Hallelujah. Please keep playing. You're tired. Play the strings. Ladies and gentlemen, see the number of people standing for loved ones. How many of you are standing in for yourself? To your sister. Just look at me. Look at me. She's going to be delivered right now where she is. From me. Don't worry. Just look at me. Just look at me. Let her go. You are feeling something coming up on you right now. Let her go. 
Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Whether they say fibroid or no womb is irrelevant. I'm just telling you that this is a demonic issue. But when God steps in, you won't go back. You can't go back to the way it used to be. Before his presence came and changed me. Just try to connect and hold your hands together and lift it up. Madam, come let me pray for you. Look at me. How many years? And then he stopped. We are going to pray. Look at me. This is a family thing. Hold on. Because it's not only you. Who else? My junior sister. Your junior sister has the same thing. She has never had a child. That's to tell you this is a spirit. But as God sets you free, he will set her free too. Onegi kagi ekeledi wigi onyene mema onyedi kagi ekeledi lay your hands on your stomach onyena poria look at me onyedi kagi go and have your child wigi onyene mema father in the name of Jesus. I open up your womb to receive baby boy. You will come back with your baby boy. Lift your hands and sing before I Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I'm going to pray for you. Whether you are standing in for yourself or for your family members, the fire of God will come upon you and that person in question will be released. You are standing as a point of contact. My God, I pray that from my left to my right, in the name of Jesus, let the angel of fruitfulness move across this place at the count of three. One, two, Three, right now, wombs be open. Wombs be open. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Miracle children. Take it for your loved ones. Take it. Take it from the realm of the spirit. Whoever you are standing in for, I command all medical complications. Go. All medical complications. Go. I cause fibroid. I cause every cyst in the name of Jesus. All those who do not have wombs, we put brand new wombs now. Brand new wombs in the name of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost is burning a lot of things. Burning a lot of chaff. Every spirit of miscarriage I curse it right now I curse it right now I curse it right now the spirit of miscarriage every spirit that comes to eat up children in the womb I arrest you you are bound you remain bound hallelujah I prophesy to every one of you here make sure you tell your loved ones we prayed for them that in the name that is above all names they will not only take in they will give birth like the Hebrew women we forbid CS in the name of Jesus they will give birth normally no devil will eat up any child there will be no miscarriage and for those who have stayed a long time we command twins we command triplets let there be a restoration i provoke it by the hand of god please don't think we're just entertaining prophecy does not just reveal it creates it creates it creates i tell you a lot of things are happening pregnancy is not just when a man meets a woman 
Mary said, be it unto me. We put miracle children in their wombs right now from the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please go back to your seat. We see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, if you came here specifically for healing, I want to minister to the sick right now. Specifically for healing, or you brought someone sick, now is your time, please. Quickly. Ushers, coordinate them so that they will line up very well. You came here with any infirmity, please. If you brought someone, now is the time to bring them out. The worship team will lead us in a powerful time of worship as we rebuke that devil. No matter how far you are, wherever you are, please find your way to the front. You came here for healing. It's called a miracle service. It's not just a name. Please, I need to pray for sick people fast because we need to release breakthroughs in other areas. There are people who your own is not sickness. Your own is breakthrough. Please just line up. Those under the anointing, just leave them. There is a pool. Some of you, as you are standing here right now, the power of God will even begin to touch you before we minister. Now we are going to do it very fast. Hallelujah. Listen. It doesn't matter what your sickness is right the anointing is not just the ability to heal it's the ability to bring solutions to any kind of problem are you getting my point so while you are standing i like you to pray and say lord i'm not going back the same i'm tired this is it this is it worship team leaders bishop please come help me pastor williams Hallelujah. Please, those of you who are seated, make sure you are not just seated watching. Be praying in tongues. We will minister very quickly. In case you are seated and you have not written your prayer request, let's save time. Now is the time to start writing your prayer request. And our online community, those streaming online, please, they can bring their prayer request. Hallelujah. Father, thank you because of your power. Let every sick body be healed. Let every sick body be healed in the name of Jesus. What's our genotype? What's our genotype? I'm not ham. Who brought her? Mother, where are you? Where's the mother? You are the mother. What's her genotype? S -S. She's SS. Don't worry. We're going to change it right now. Huh? Not just her, but this is something that will need to happen in the family. There is sickness parading itself as blood condition. It's not blood condition, anything change this lady's genotype right now baby 
let SS change to AA right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And I cast the spirit of infirmity from her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Perfection in your body, in Jesus' name. Your son too is SS. All of you are SS. Huh? You too, you are SS. Hallelujah. Madam, don't cry. Weep not. For there is one who is worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. Hallelujah. Your child too. Can somebody collect the child, please? So that I'll pray for her. He's sleeping, so just let him continue his sleep. Father, we change his genotype right now in the name of Jesus. And we rebuke sickness. Please hold my hands. I need to pray for you. There is a lot of poverty in your life. Look at me. Why do people hate you? Huh? Is that true? What? I can't understand why. How can they just hate you just like that? Look at me. The enemy has done this. But tonight God visits you. Change her story, oh God. Change her story. You will return with testimonies of dramatic breakthrough in Jesus' name. All right, let's save time. Healing in your name. Jesus. As I pray for you, as you go back to your seat, make sure you check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Say Jesus.
break every covenant with the power of the miracles everywhere and right now and right now miracle I see miracle
God is going to come on somebody, a lady outside. There is one lady, the power of God will come mightily upon her. Please bring her in. I need to speak to her. The power of God will come very mightily on one lady. Very, very mightily. I can't remember why I called you people, honestly. Let me pray for you. your father is in this meeting. Where is he? I need to talk to him. You are the best. Eh? He's not around. I mean, he's here. You mean? He's in town. He's in town. He's not okay, in I thought he was around. I need to talk to him. Go and tell him that the gates of delay has been shattered. Look at me. Look at me. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Go and tell your father that the gates of delay has been shattered. Father, confirm your word. I give you praise. Your hands will bring bread to your table. You are a creative person. Make use of your hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to specifically deal with certain things right now. Hallelujah. Um. I'm not going to ask you to come out, but I hope that they came out here. We want to rebuke all kinds of incurable diseases. I just want to take one or two minutes and rebuke incurable diseases. Because if we do not help God's people, medically it's incurable. HIV, hepatitis, all these satanic things around. Make sure you never believe these things and settle on them believing that that's how it would be. So please stand up everybody. Stand up please. Please rise up everybody. We want to speak against every medical report that the doctor has said nothing can be done about it and in case you are here and any of your loved ones is in the sick bed please connect with them even as we pray right now hallelujah father I pray right now specifically for incurable diseases we depend on you and we ask for your mercy. Without your mercy, these people are on their way to death. But I thank you because you are the resurrection and you are the life. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Anyone with HIV in this place, I declare be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. HIV be healed in the name of Jesus. Cancer be healed in the name of Jesus every form of cancer every form of cancer be healed in the name of Jesus every kind of hepatitis right now in this place I cause it to its root in the name of Jesus Christ hepatitis be healed 
be gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For blood groups, we are going to deal with that one when I minister prophetically. Please lift your prayer requests. Pass it to the person at the last, at the last end. Ushers, please walk around all over this building. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is ministering to me. I want to specially pray for families with uncompleted building projects. Please find your way quickly and just stand here. The Lord wants to minister. Just one word I will speak. I want you to believe. I'm not saying you want to build a house, please. The power of God is touching people and changing uncompleted projects. Uncompleted projects. Please believe what I'm saying. I'm not just playing pranks here. As you're standing here, the Lord is going to set people free. Okay, if, if there's no space, just stand where you are and then I'll pray for you. Lift your hands, everybody. It will surprise you. The Bible says how that the hand of God came your hands the hand of God came upon Elijah the prophet and he ran the Bible says he overtook the chariots of Ahaz down to Jezreel I want to pray we are going to pray for everybody prophesying speed but I want to pray because the Lord is ministering to me specifically for building projects some of them are tied down because of finance some of them are tied down because of court issues some of them are tied down because of diabolic demonic things it doesn't matter what category sir or Gaza, God is going to visit you because your issue is it looks like it's money but it's not money this is witchcraft God is going to set you free are you getting what I'm saying lift your hands please my God I pray goodness there will be a lot of mighty miracles I want you to believe Many of you are going to feel literally like fire. It will come on your right hand. It will come on your right hand in a very powerful way. All across here right now, the angel of the Lord will move right now. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, move right now. Everything stopping any uncompleted project. Your right hand, the power of God is a prophetic language. The right hand of God is power. And by that power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, I command every uncompleted project, be completed now in the name of Jesus. Be completed now in the name of Jesus. Every power stopping any building project, I challenge you right now in the name of Jesus. Every lack of finance, responsible, I command supplies from heaven. Supplies from heaven, supplies from heaven, supplies from heaven. Every land issue in this place, every court issue, we resolve it here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Go and return with mighty testimonies. Let the hand of God, the finisher's anointing, let it come upon you and upon your loved ones. A finisher's anointing. That unction that comes to finish what you have started. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please run back to your seat. Submit your prayer request very quickly. Hallelujah. Please listen. There are a number of people here. The Lord is ministering to me. Mike, can you play strings? Who is playing? Please. Play strings, strings, strings. Just play strings. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a few people here. Please listen. You had a dream. And in the dream, either a dog or a serpent beat you. Please come out. There are a number of people in that kind of situation. God is ministering to me. That devil is a liar. And what, please, if, if this is... If you're part of these people I've mentioned, 
please come out. A dog or a serpent. I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is showing me. Because this is very demonic. That lady is, is, is one of the people and she'll be delivered right now. No matter where you are hiding, even if you didn't come out here as I pray, the power of God will locate you. It's a very serious situation. Please stand up, everybody. Please stand up, everybody. Bala, you're just going to clash the Simba for me. I'm going to pray. Because this is a very demonic thing. The Lord is ministering to me. This is the deliverance of someone right now. A snake or a, or a dog, an animal, beat you in the dream. It didn't create any effect, but you may not know what it is causing to you right now. Goodness. I see a pruning fork. An angel of the Lord standing with a pruning fork. Hallelujah. At the count of three, as they clash the cymbal, there will be mighty deliverances here. And some of you in the crowd, as it's happening to them, it will happen to you. Hallelujah. Father, right now, let your power begin to move. Every demonic object in your body, right now, at the count of three, come out, jump out, and go. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Go, go, out of them, out of them. Some people in the congregation, it will touch you there too. Out of them, every foul spirit. I'm going to lay my hands on everybody. There. Out of them, out of them, out of them, out of them, out of them. Please help them. Devil of darkness, out of them, out of them, come out, come out, everything that has not been planted by my father that is responsible for your limitation. Hey, hey. Oh yeah. Hey, hey. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I command deliverance. Oh dear, oh yeah. I command deliverance. Oh yeah. I command deliverance. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You will be delivered mightily. This is a demonic thing on you. Release her now. Release her now. Now. Out. Release her now. Release her now. You must let her go. 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 Let her go. Out. Come out. Out, out, go, go, go. Every devil, remove every demonic ring, every demonic chain, every demonic ring, every demonic chain. Let God's people go right now. Go. Release her right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Bring that baby. Go. Let her go. Now. Let her go. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Take off everything. Take your property. Pack your load on your back. Get set. Go, 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 go. Go, go. Go, go. Out of her now. Out. 
devil of darkness out of her by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out. I break covenants. I break yokes. Every act of witchcraft. I plead the blood and I set you free. Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. This is the root cause of many problems in our lives and our families. Preachers have told us once you are born again, it's all right. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. You are seeing it by yourself that it's not all right. There is an operation of the kingdom. That must separate you with darkness. Some of these people, what is happening to them is responsible for stubbornness, immorality, and we come and preach in church. We say, Stop it. It can't be stopped till that devil gives way. Bring this lady for me. Let her go now, once and for all remove this demonic ring i see a lot of rings on her feet on her hands remove it and pack your load and go 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 see bro you should thank me for what i'm doing i'm preparing your wives and husbands you just get up and come and meet a lady and then you don't pray. You see why we tell people to be spiritual. That's why many people keep wondering. Why will a brother come to me and run away? Or why will a sister come? I break covenants. This is an usher. This is our own usher. Go. Go! I see you in the spirit and I command you to go. This spirit that is tormenting this lady, the Lord is showing me this thing has been in this family for 178 years. This is what God is showing me. It has nothing to do with her. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's save time. Have you submitted this? Father, let none of these people return with any influence. It must let them go. It must let them go. Hallelujah. So you see a student will write jam and write wayek and enter the school and all of a sudden become dull and people keep insulting. This child is not good. You think people just smoke because they want to smoke or they sleep around just because they want to sleep around? Brothers and sisters, there are influences. And it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to keep the devil where he belongs so that the people of God can enter the reality of their inheritance. That's why you see people who keep testifying. Oh, breakthrough just started happening in my family. You may not know what has been limiting them. That's why here we don't just heal the sick. I told you the anointing is the power of God to solve problems. Any kind of problem. It's not just healing. It's not just wheelchairs. There are destinies that are tied down. And they need the power of God. You will be amazed that after you leave this meeting tonight, doors will just be opening. You will see how easy it is and then you will know that something happened to you it doesn't matter whether you came out here or not once you are under the influence of this sound something is happening to you hallelujah i want to pray on this request right now hallelujah many of you have communicated your thoughts and that of your family members right here 
please, if anyone has not submitted your request, do that very fast. As we pray on these requests, I don't care what you wrote here. May this be the last time you will see it. In the name of Jesus Christ, every Pharaoh and every Egypt that you wrote and dropped here, as surely as the Lord God lives, this will be the very last time. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in tongues. Bishop, come please, Pastor Williams, come as we pray on the request. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Make sure you are praying in tongues. Visitation, oh God. Visit your people. Visit your people, oh God. Let there be breakthroughs. Visit your people. Visit your people. Visit your people. Visit your people. She break the baladadadaba. Oh, yes. Oh, Rakata Baladaba. Please stretch your hands. Connect oh, with us. All those online, they should connect with us. Lord, let this be the last time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, dear, oh, yes. Thank you, Father. Because with you, nothing is impossible. With you, no request is impossible. Anything that is not in existence can be created. Father, we thank you. Because this request cannot defy your power. Thank you, Jesus. Because it is possible. Thank you, Jesus. We see the answers. Lord, we receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Because from this night forward, we we'll begin to see the manifestations of everything we wrote here. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for breakthrough for families. Thank you for jobs. Thank you for marriages. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. We celebrate you, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We declare and we speak over these requests. We turn them into testimonies. We turn them into testimonies. We turn them into testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you're a minister of the gospel and you came, you came from another place. What I mean, minister, make sure you're a preacher, a minister of the gospel, you're a ministry, and you came from outside of this state. Please come out. I want to minister to you right now. Hallelujah. Is there anyone like that? Please, quickly, quickly, let's save time. Just come and line up here. The Lord will ignite you tonight. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Do ministry with integrity. Do ministry with truth. Ministry is not about money or flamboyancy or manifestation or going on air. It has no, nothing to do with that. Hallelujah. Ministry with integrity, with the fear of the Lord. That who you are in the open is who you will be in the secret. The secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. I want to pray for you. That God will characterize your life and your ministry with signs and wonders. That struggling will end for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands as I pray for you. My God, in the name of Jesus, let something come upon them. In the name of Jesus, let something come upon them. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let something come upon them. In the name of Jesus, let something come upon them. Let something come upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're about rounding up. Please rise up. The prophetic ministration is the greatest part of this meeting as far as I'm concerned. Please stand up everybody. This is the moment I want you to shout amen. Amen. We're about to open doors, breakthroughs of all sorts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Wherever you can hear my voice, make sure that you shout a big amen. Please lift your hands. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. This is not the doing of any man. What you see is an election of grace. When God calls people, he empowers them. There are vessels today carrying anointings that can change people's situations and change people's story. Hallelujah. And I'm about to pray for you that something will truly open up in your life. This is the part you get to receive. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Can you play the keyboard, Mike, please? Please lift your hands. I want you to shout amen with everything that you have. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, O ye everlasting door. Every gate limiting your progress in the name of Jesus we shatter that gate into pieces I shatter it into pieces into pieces I command gates 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 hear ye the word of the Lord gates I command Ephata be open be open be open be open gates of marriages gates of restoration be open anyone trusting God for a job here in the name that is above all names I command miracle jobs now miracle jobs now miracle jobs now I provoke your destiny help us May they find you. May they help you. May they honor you. For every limitation you have experienced in your life and your finances, in the name that is above every other name, I command breakthrough. Receive breakthrough. Receive breakthrough in every area of your life breakthrough in your academics breakthrough every result that is not your own we change it tonight we change it tonight let the angel of God go to every faculty every department we command change 
any family that has been victimized in this place any family that has been victimized in the name that is above all names whoever plan evil against your family we judge them this night let the sword of judgment rest upon evil doers let the sword of judgment whoever said your family will not lift up their heads may my God judge them may my God judge them hallelujah every ordinance of darkness every enchantment every spell that has been written over your life that you will not become what God died what Jesus died for you to become this night we blot out those handwritings we set those altars on fire those shrines on fire and we release you anyone here who has suffered delay of any kind I don't know what area you have suffered delay or your loved ones but I want to pray for you right now my Bible says and I will restore to you the years canker worms can eat time they can eat years of men's lives but I pray my God and my King right now I shout it in the spirit restoration 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 receive it restoration I prophesy I decree restoration of joy of peace of finances of opportunities hallelujah there are some of you because of your mistakes of the past certain things have happened in your life and like Samson many people are laughing at you and mocking you that will your strength return I want to prophesy to you just like the hair of Samson grew back I call forth anointings that left because of indiscipline I call back opportunities that left people because they misused it I call it back I call it back the God who changes times may he change times to your favor hallelujah now lift your hands there will be impartations right now it is vain to attempt to serve God without the empowerment of the spirit there are many of you who are passionate about the things of God what you need is fire in your life what you need is grace what you need is authentic unction I'm going to pray for you let the men around you know you are serving a living God lift your hands it's going to clash the Simba and I'm going to begin to speak and there will be impartations of gifts prayer altars will come alive dry bones will come alive make sure lift your hands thank you Jesus hallelujah you're going to shout the name Jesus once and I'm going to begin to speak many of you my God I pray especially for those who have never had encounters dramatic deep encounters let these encounters swallow up spiritual laziness swallow up prayerlessness right now shout the name Jesus once take it now receive it the gift of the Holy Ghost fire fire take it take it inside and outside fire the spirit of prophecy receive it the healing anointing I release it upon you go and heal the sick receive it 
the healing anointing. Take it. Prophesy. Visions. I command visions. Visions. Let the vistas of the spirit be opened up to you. Every gift available for your enriching, I command prayer fire. Take it now. Take it now. Prayer fire. Prayer fire. Prayer fire. Regete tete e prokotoba man prakata e koske e bandapa. Regete tete. Regete tete e prokotoba. I found the fire on your prayer altar. It comes back alive. I pray for you right now. The Bible says, Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, even thy God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness, and that oil sets you above your fellows. The anointing for distinguishing. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Everywhere you go, be set apart. Be distinguished. Take it now. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Esther went to a man called Haggai, the one who took care of the virgins of the king. And he gave her a particular ointment to keep rubbing for one year. And she passed the king once and he found favor. I want to pray for you. That anointing that can cause you to ride sweatlessly that grace for favor in the name that is above all names. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Shaka Baba Baba. Sekete. Mam Protoskopa. Shoteke te 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 te. Teke te Baba Baba Baba. Yes, be distinguished. The favor of the Lord is upon you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. It marks you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. It marks you. Hallelujah. 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 There are many of us who are praying. And say, Lord, what was I born for? Why did you bring me here? What was I born to do? I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. It says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. No confusion. A purposeless man will never find fulfillment. I want to pray that God will grant you revelation of the reason why you were born that out of the 7 billion people in the earth you were born for a reason therefore my God let the angel that brings revelation visit your people in the name of Jesus through dreams through visions through prophetic confirmations receive the mandate of your life Receive the blueprint of your life. Hallelujah. Every habit that you are struggling with, that is mocking your Christian experience, I don't care what it is, pornography, masturbation, anything that is compromising your Christian experience, right now, I judge the spirits behind it. I judge the spirits behind it. 
and I command them to let you go. Be free, be free, be free, be free from every habit. Be free. Hallelujah. For those of you who do not have the zeal to study the word again, it's not like you're not serious. You don't even know what has happened to you. There's no zeal to study the word. Some of you are finding yourself, you were once on fire. In terms of your word life, some of you would pray through the night. Some of you would study. Suddenly distractions happen. I want to pray right now. Son of man, can these bones live again? And he said, only down the west. I prophesy to you, every dead spiritual life in this place, my God, I pray, let the wind, the east wind, that reawakens dead things, that is responsible for resurrection from the east side of the spirit, let that wind blow over your life and bring restoration now. 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 Hallelujah. Listen to me. God wants to make the best out of your life. But you must be willing to yield yourself. There are two kinds of people in this place right now. There are those who have been taking these things of the spirit, just playing around. You may be born again, but your life is so unpredictable. You're not serious. You know that you need to make it right. There are others who have never made this decision for Jesus. You go to church, you have a Christian name. Hallelujah. And there are others who are backslidden completely and they need to be restored. As I count one to five, those three categories of people, whether you've given your heart to the Lord and you found yourself derailing, or you are praying and saying, Lord, I want to be serious with you from today. Or you are saying, Lord, I'm surrendering everything. As I count one to five, please, I'd like you to run like your life depends on it. God is waiting for you right here. One, please don't wait for anybody. Two, inside and outside. It doesn't matter what you have done. Run, run, run. I didn't say walk, run. Run like your life depends on it. Three. Jehovah, we praise you. Jehovah, we to pray for you lift your hands i salute you for making this decision this is not unto a man but this is unto god hallelujah i like you to say this after me from the depths of your heart please don't play games with god god is willing to make your life better than you can ever imagine now is the time to shame the devil and say enough is enough enough i'm tired enough is enough say after me convincingly from the depths of your heart Lord Jesus I repent of my sins you're not reciting a point make sure you understand what you're saying I repent of my sins and I love you with all my heart forgive me today I make Jesus the Lord of my life I ask for forgiveness cleanse me wash me I receive your life into my spirit from today forward ever and backward never I denounce sin and Satan 
and I live unto righteousness. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Make me a new person. In the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted and I'll pray for you. Father, receive these ones into your kingdom and your family. Let today be the beginning of a dramatic and a genuine transformation. I break them free from wrong companies. And Lord, I pray that they will be empowered in the inner man to do mighty things for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now look at me, every one of you. I congratulate you. This is the best decision you would have ever made in your life. And I want you to know that no matter what went wrong in your life, this is a fresh start. Hallelujah. Now, tomorrow, listen please. Tomorrow, Bishop Stan will be meeting with you at the chapel, just close to the chapel bookstore for the experience of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You need it. They'll be guiding you, sharing with you a few foundational things. It's very, very important. Time is what, sir? 5 p.m. prompt. Please, 5 p.m. prompt. For now, I'd like you to follow the ushers. They're waving at you and they'll have your information. We'll pray for you and we'll follow you. God bless you. Please follow them. God bless you. Follow them very quickly. Hallelujah. Let's take the following announcements very quickly. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first time, aside from those who are going out, if this is your first time of worshiping with us here at Koinonia, we love you and we want to bless you. Please, wherever you are, just find your way to the front right now. God bless you. Please find your way quickly, quickly. Koinonia, celebrate them. This is not your best. There are people who came all the way from Jos, all the way from Abuja, different parts. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. This is Koinonia, a ministry put together by Eternity Network International. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate and we celebrate you. We meet every Friday. This is not our venue. Our venue is CGC. We had to make an arrangement because there was something going on there. So we'll be there from next week. We're back to our venue. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and just bless them. Pray for them. May the Lord bless you. We cause the heavens to be open over you. We bless you with hunger for spiritual things. In the name that is above all names. May you experience the hand of God in dramatic ways. You will understand the intimacy of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Thank you once again for coming. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. Hallelujah. I'd like you to just follow the ushers. They'll communicate a few things to you and you'll be back. Thank you so much. Koinonia, celebrate them very quickly. God bless you. Thank you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Baska Nakata Branda Katekapos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and let a The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.